right, everybody. <clears throat> My lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are diving into a unique little bit of drama. Um, we are going to be diving into a video called Kindly Do Better by uh, a channel called Kidology. Here is the video itself, okay? This is the video, and this is the channel Kidology. Now, uh, I have watched the first approximately 15 to 17 or so minutes of this video um, last night, actually. And uh, this was the first time I've ever heard of this channel. I've never heard of the channel Kidology uh, before, but as you can see, they're quite a prominent channel. They have uh, about 140,000 subscribers, which is a pretty, pretty you know, hefty number of subscribers. Um, now, uh, one of my one of my uh, uh, friends does uh, know Kidology and and was like, wait a minute, Kidology. I used to watch Kidology's videos. They always came off as very lib to me, uh, with some things that made them feel sus. So there, that was an interesting thing for me to receive. I had never heard anything about this channel. The first thing I found out was that one of my friends has watched a ton of their videos and said that they were lib with a little bit of sussiness mixed in. Now, when I say sussiness, I mean conservative crap. Um, there are a lot of channels that are like, uh, you know, that, that, cry, that try to be like, uh, you know, uh, you know, like like sort of milk toast libs or centrists, and then they drop some major conservative crap on your lap. And uh, I hate when that happens. It's incredibly annoying for me to be like watching a video that is just like mildly distasteful, and then all of a sudden I just realize, oh, this person is like propagating hate speech uh, very subtly. I hate that stuff. Now I don't know if it was that bad, um, but this was the characterization I received from one of my friends who just said that they they stopped watching because they felt like there was some sus some sus conservatism leaking into the content now um now uh uh <laughs> now once again like i said until last night i hadn't really heard of this video and then i saw that uh, that this video came out talking about the left and I I while I was uh, while I was sort of uh, floating in my in my mind palace as I was uh, as I was drifting through the the lost corners of the hellish realms uh, I heard the, the 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 twittering and the tweeting and the chirping of birds from above me and I heard them talking about this video and I was like what the hell's going on so I saw the video and then I heard people saying, oh, I don't know how I feel about this video, da, 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 da. And I was like, all right, I gotta look into this a little more. And then something very strange and fortuitous happened, uh, which is that I happened to uh, open the video, just like I'm doing here, and I was scrubbing through, and I saw this. Do you guys see that right there? Do you, do you see what that is right there? And then I knew I had to watch this video. I knew. Once I saw that this was a video about the online left and that Shoe on Head and Xander Hall, uh, uh, Xander Hall calling out Shoe on Head for blatantly standing by while her rabid conservative anti-LGBT fans literally call queer people demons in her comments and she does nothing and then she also goes on to lie about it and pretend that those people don't exist. I knew that this video, this video had to be watched. So I started to watch the first 15 minutes or so. And then I said, I gotta watch this on stream. So now you understand the path that I took to getting to this point, my lovely, lovely imps. And let me tell you, I think we're going to have an interesting ride with this video. Again, I did watch the first 15 minutes and I stopped because I knew that I needed to blind react to the rest of this video with you all. Now, I don't know if this person takes shoe on heads uh, shoe on head side on things. I don't know anything about it other than the arguments at the beginning of the video were so egregiously bad that I knew I just knew we had to go over it together. Now, I want to point something out. This video, 
already has about 76,000 views. So this is not a video that has not been seen. And earlier today, uh, upon upon some uh, upon some further investigation, I realized that actually um, this person has been beefing with with FD signifier, which is a strange thing. Uh, to hear about and in fact FD signifier has accused this person of dog whistling Which I'm like hmm Hmm, and then I looked a little deeper and I saw you know videos about fem cells I saw videos about ethna cells. I saw videos about queer cells and I started to get the feeling that we had discovered a Maybe a little bit of a, maybe one of the ancestors or descendants, I should say, maybe one of the descendants of the master centrist himself, Tim Pool. You know, Tim Pool is a man who fence, who uh, verbally fence sits so hard that the fence appears to be poking out of his mouth, um, while at the same time being absolutely nothing but a patsy for the far right. And as you all know, uh, I do not think particularly highly of so-called centrists. Uh, uh, being a centrist is an absurd idea. The idea that, that you can just sort of plop yourself in the middle point between two opposing ideologies, between two uh, ideologies with radically different interpretations and prescriptions for the world, and that you are going to come to a co coherent position. Okay, uh, it is an absurd idea. That is the the idea of a centrist is 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 like it's like the biggest it's like the biggest red red flag you can possibly uh, imagine. It's like somebody who literally cannot imagine that politics isn't actually uh, like a like a seesaw. Like they actually think that politics is like physically a seesaw and you could just sit in the middle to make sure it stays balanced not that like the right is pushing for a world where queer people are no longer allowed to exist publicly and are thrown in prison for being gay whereas the left is fighting for liberation of all people like they're a, they they think that there's only two political sides and that's it you just need to sit in the middle and make sure it's okay and again as i looked deeper into this I, it got more and more concerning let me just point something out real quick okay <clears throat> Let me read you the description of this video. Uh, oh yeah, I gotta put this back up. Hold on. Kidology. There we go. Let's take a look here. <clears throat> a note of caution. Just in case you are wondering, I am apolitical. I do st stay very politically informed, primarily due to my own curiosity and interest. However, I do not participate in politics, nor do I vote strategically. This is purely because of my context. I am a minority with very little socio-political power, yet my human rights are sufficiently protected under the EU and international law. I am not conservative nor right-wing. I am anti-neoliberalism as it manifests itself contemporarily, but I can appreciate its theoretical value. The theoretical value of neoliberalism, the theoretical value of neoliberalism is just capitalism. Like, what? Neoliberalism is just capitalism uh that was rebranded there is no theoret like the theoretical value of neoliberalism is there is no theory it is literally just capitalism it is the primacy of private property the primacy of the corporation over basically anything else perhaps someday or due to circumstance i will engage in politics however at this point in my life i do not care for it this video is purely analytical please do remember that I adore you all, lefties and righties alike. Well, it's nice. It's very good to know that this person will kiss Hitler and also the victims of Hitler. How nice. What a great position to be in. Now, uh, of course, it is absolutely absurd to claim that you are apolitical in a video titled Kindly Do Better that is about how the left needs to do better. That is in and of itself a political statement of uh, of, 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 of a definitive political statement, okay? Uh, nothing is truly apolitical. No person can be political. If you live, if you breathe, if you drink water and eat food, you are political, of course. Um, however, uh, especially if you make a video about politics on YouTube, 
in which you claim to be asserting uh, uh, an, that this is a analytical video, uh, you are definitely engaging in politics. However, I want you real quick to read one more thing with me. The political spectrum. Let's take a look at what the political spectrum is here. This is the political spectrum as drafted by Kidology. Do you remember how I said that a person who believes themselves to be a centrist is somebody who perceives politics as a literal seesaw? What do you think you are looking at here? This is a literal, this is a, a two, a binary spectrum or a bimodal spectrum. Democratic, neoliberalism, liberalism, eco-socialism, democratic socialism, socialism, the new left, communism, anarchism, anti-fascism. I don't understand what this means here. Like, I don't know what, why anti-fascism would come before communism and anarchism when anti-fascism is like deeply ingrained in both communism and anarchism historically. The fundamental left, urban guerrilla tactics, anti-imperialism, radical politics, reactionary politics, status quo, isolation, progressive social change, monarch, I, this is just to me very silly. I don't know what any of this is actually supposed to mean. I don't know if this is supposed to be a timeline. It appears to be that if you go further, furthest to the left, you stop being an anti-fascist and you become an anarchist, which makes no sense at all, uh, but okay. There we go. So there's the political spectrum. This is based purely on theory, re North America and Northern Europe. Neoliberalism, for instance, historically is more to the right. However, I would argue Preva its prevalence since 1979 has shifted its ideas and appeal more center left. Um, when I think what she means when she says theory here, I think she means like like a game theory. You know, like um, when people say it's based on theory, usually what they mean is that they have read a whole bunch of political theory and they have condensed it into something else. Therefore, it's based on theory. But I think what she means here is that that's just a game theory. So you know. The left, let's read what she says about the left, encompasses political ideologies centered on egalitarianism and social equality, e.g. social equity via social reform, influenced by critical theories of society and socio-political identities. A belief in relatively expansive government role and influence in achieving social progress. Now, most of that definition was nonsense, or at least it was it was imparsable. But the ending is the ending is just absurd. Uh, they're like leftist ideologies, like most of them are anti-state, like historically. Um, while yes, there have been leftist movements that are pro-state movements and there are leftist movements that are pro-state uh like it is it is a it is incredibly difficult <laughs> to make the argument that leftist movements which started the, the leftist movement started fight by fighting against monarchy and then they developed into anti-capitalism with marx it seems very funny to make the argument that 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 uh, the left is defined by expansive government role and influence in achieving social politics. That is, it's a lot, but it gets even better. The right. Let's take a look at this definition of the right. Political ideologies that place civil rights and liberties at the center of decision making. Oh yeah. The right place, the right is the one who places civil rights and liberties at the center of decision making. Minimal government intervention. Now, this one really gets me. Minimal government intervention in the lives of individuals, families, federal states, and communities. Okay? Now, I want you to take that one, hold that one in your mind, okay? That she believes the right believes in minimal government intervention in the lives of individuals. Okay, ready? An observance of natural laws, re-morality, social hierarchy based on merit, divine rights, tradition, or history to direct and order society or culture.
So I want to know, this is her definition of the right, okay? This is not, this is supposedly her centrist definition of the right. And I want to understand how she squares the idea that, that, um, con that the right believes in an observance of natural law via a uh, divine right, social hierarchy based on divine right, and then also believes that, that the right is defined by minimal government intervention. Like, how do you, how do you possibly, how do you hold those two thoughts in your head and go, yes, this is an accurate definition? Like, I can understand people coming to a different definition that, about the right than I do. You know, I, um, use a a fairly bare bare bones uh definition of the right which is that i believe that the right is defined uh as as a group um by people who believe uh in the uh, in the validity of uh, of of hierarchy they believe that hierarchy is a good and natural thing uh whether they believe that it's good and natural because uh of of science or whether they believe it's good and natural because of religion that's basically what characterizes all right-wing ideologies all of them all right-wing ideologies essentially assert that hierarchy is a good and desirable thing and what tends to define leftist ideologies is their fixation on liberation uh, and their breakdown of hierarchies, even if there are indeed left-wing movements that um, embrace authoritarian hierarchies. It is generally, at least by their claim, they, uh, they claim that they, they do so because they believe that ultimately it will destroy hierarchy. I'm being very charitable here. Obviously, I think that Marxist-Leninists are absolutely full of shit. Um, so these are some very interesting definitions. Um, and then there's the citations and all that, blah, 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 okay? So we're gonna jump into this video now. Now it's time for us to actually do the react. We have a lot to react to, but I just wanted to give you guys a taste of what the description said. You know, and I think that's fair. Um, I think it's fair for me to, to read the description of the video with you all before we watch the video, especially when the description is so psychologically informative. Is it not? Is it not interesting that somebody, that, that this centrist believes that the left uh, believes in big government and the right believes in small government and also simultaneously believes that the right believes in small government and also believes in social hierarchy based on divine right and tradition. And also merit at the same time, which is certainly a whole bunch of very interesting things to try and put together in a definition. Needless to say, I think we're in for a ride. Are you guys all ready? Are you all ready? If you are ready, press that motherfucking like button and subscribe because we're about to get into the, this, this whole mess. And uh, by the way, my sniffer, my ability to smell uh, drama that's cooking, I'm telling you, I got a feeling, I got a feeling a lot of people are gonna be reacting to this video in the coming days because, uh, well, let's just get into it. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's do it. The left needs to up its game. The left are- Jesus, whoa, too loud, way too loud. Heading toward Napoleon territory. And by that, I don't mean toward territory of Napoleon Bonaparte, the emperor of France. I mean, comrade Napoleon, the Berkshire boar from Orwell's Animal Farm. Animal Farm- we got George Orwell! We got George Orwell 1962! We got George Orwell Animal by Animal Farm! George Orwell! Hell yeah! Love it! Let's get into it! Farm started off as a dream, a vision of a world all but free of human beings. This world would be one where no animal must tyrannize over his own kind. Weak or strong, clever or simple, we are all brothers. All animals are equal. The intention was bright, glistening in the opening chapter of Orwell's novella. However, we all know the ending. And this is an ending which, regrettably, I'm increasingly seeing repeat itself among- What's the ending? I'm not kidding you. I actually do not know. Uh, I've never read Animal Farm. It's the George Orwell piece that I haven't read. I was much more interested in 1984, which is the one that most of them will cite. What is a, what, what's the ending? It, the ending is that the pigs and the humans end up looking indistinguishable from each other. Oh, okay, that makes sense. All right, cool. Let's do it. Those whom... The pigs become capitalists. The pigs turn into the human oppressors. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Napoleon the pig takes over and becomes indistinguishable from the humans. Okay. 
All right. So the argument is that she has witnessed the left take over and turn into uh, uh, into dictators. Is that what she's trying to say here? Oh, yeah, totally. Yes. As President Sunday so wisely points out, has becoming an a pro-imperial right-wing stooge. Yes, exactly. Uh, the humble uh, the humble has uh, of infrared who started his origins by yelling at trans women on the Internet and ended his story by uh, drunkenly ranting in a Twitter space about how he believes his movement is going to attach uh, is going to, sorry, is going to build a spaceship using the pyramids of Egypt because uh, because he believes that they were, they're uh, secretly uh, planted there by leftist aliens for him to escape the planet. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes, that has. Ah, yes, he's such a leftist, such a good leftist. Yeah, let's go. Port to be on the side of progress, on the side of equality, and on the side of visionaries. The left. The tendency to convert to concrete. So hold on a second. I want to hear that again one more time. In purport to be on the side of progress, on the side of equality, and on the side of visionaries. The left. The tendency to convert to concrete issues into ideological problems, to invest them with moral color and high emotional charge, is to invite conflicts which can only damage a society. So why am I making this video? Well, I would say that there's two reasons. The first being that I believe that historically and presently, the left has substantial potential. I think this is purely in the fact of what the left stands for. The left stands for innovation, for progress, not just technological and economic progress, but importantly, social and moral progress. There is among the left an appreciation that change is inevitable, but that that isn't something which we should be fearful of. It isn't something which we should cower away from, but should rather embrace and confront. It is no coincidence that throughout modern history, intellectuals, philosophers, public intellectuals, profound thinkers and writers have overwhelmingly been left-leaning. It is also no coincidence why, when it comes to the most memorable, the most outstanding art and creativity and expression of oneself, we see overwhelmingly yet again that these individuals are minorities, that they are often individuals who have lived in oppressive situations and societies, that they tend to lean toward more revolutionary thinking or toward more evolutionary thinking, that they are anti-establishment, that they are anti-tradition, that they often forge an identity of their own that goes contrary to the status quo. I think Bot Knight says, I'm betting this is going to wrap up with saying that the left is creative, but the right is intel intelligent and practical. Just wait. For instance, historically, this is why the Jewish diaspora has done so exceptionally well in the arts and in many a sphere of modern life. And why, overwhelmingly, the Jewish diaspora is left and liberal leaning. I'm not going to go over what I mean by left, liberal and right here. That will be included in the description box down below for you to read at your own leisure. Because I think we all have our understanding, broadly speaking, of this. And so I don't. I actually don't know if that's statistically true. I don't know if it's statistically true that the the entirety of the Jewish diaspora is 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 predominantly left leaning, because I do believe that um that uh, that I mean maybe I'm wrong here, but a lot of um a lot of people who now live in Israel and Israel is a very far right leaning country. Uh, would would have considered themselves at one point or currently still a part of the Jewish diaspora. Well, I don't know. It is a little bit of a weird start, I will say. Um, yeah, I think in America that's true. I do think it's true. It definitely used to be true, but Israel has definitely challenged that. But yes, it is a bit odd to start out a video um, about the left with immediately jumping into generalities about the Jews. Um, and I'm not trying to say, I, I, I want to be fair here, I'm not trying to say that she's being anti-Semitic. All I'm trying to say here is that, like, um, when you're talking about the left, when you're talking about the left versus the right, and you're trying to compare and contrast the left versus the right, 
and you're, one of the first things you bring up as a part of the left is to immediately do a long paragraph about how, about how Jewish people have had great success. I think that might leave you open to your message, uh, at the very least, uh, being twisted in the wrong direction. Um, yeah, it's, it's... Are we watching the whole hour? Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think that, like, uh, I, I don't think that she's intending to do, like, a Jewish question thing, but I will say that, again, like I always say, this is one of those issues where you do need to be careful about your wording. If you go in and say that uh, Jewish people have been successful in Hollywood, the arts, and, and academia because they're left-wing, because they're communists, I mean... Guys, that is literally that. That's the same claim. That's this. That's that is a much nicer uh, way of saying that cultural Marxists run Hollywood and and the and 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 the you know uh, academies or in the in the university system of America. Um, I know people are telling me. Uh, people are telling me that that I need to that I'm being very generous. I'm trying to be generous. I'm right now. I'm I'm trying to be. I'm trying to respond in kind to what's been put out so far. Okay, let's continue. I don't want to keep going over this concept and these concepts, but I would say that based on the traditional and conventional definition of leftist politics and its more liberal tenets, we can pretty much say that progress is something that we largely associate with left or liberal politics. And so that is my first reason for making- Left, no, liberal, yes. Uh, progress is a very loaded word. Progress is a word that is heavily, uh, heavily latched onto um, by the by by liberals. Um, the idea of it's a it's a uh, it's it's it builds out of this like sort of uh, inevitability that capitalism is going to progress us forward and the world will continue to get better until it can no, no longer progress any further. Uh, I think that's a liberal concept. I don't know that progress in and of itself is like a leftist concept, especially historically. If you go and read uh, leftists historically, you will not hear them using the word progress. Uh, they tend to be much more pointed with their language. Um, why are you trying to be kind? There's no reason to be kind in my opinion. Because uh, while I do not think particularly highly of the uh, of, of the uh, description of this video, I want to give this person a chance. Um, like I said, I have some I have some suspicions about them based on what I've heard, but I want to give them a chance. So yeah, no need to be over <laughs> over the top, all right? Let's continue. Making this video, the left has great potential, as we can see from its historical figures and its place in history. And this leads to the second reason why I'm making this video. And this is a belief that the left is wasting this potential and has kind of turned on itself in a way which is in no way conducive to everything that the left could be and I believe ought to be as a position, as a political and socio-economic position for people to follow. To so this is going to be interesting. I'm very curious to see how she builds this case uh, because usually when people say the left is eating themselves, that is almost always a <laughs> it's almost always a Tim Pool video title. That is usually what the, that is like the that is like one of the catchphrases of the right that the left is eating itself. And usually what they mean by that is that there is conflict between the left anti-capitalists and liberals capitalists. And that conflict is natural. That conflict has to occur. Liberals who assert that capitalism is the ideal way to run the world are ideologically uh, in opposition to anyone who doesn't believe in capitalism. Now there are liberals, there are people who consider themselves liberals who are capable of being convinced otherwise, but the actual ideologies are not compatible. Liberalism is not a left-wing ideology. Liberalism is a right-wing ideology. 
I'm not kidding you. I know that you that uh, 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 that that might sound absurd, given that we use the word liberal in America to talk about Democrats generally. But liberalism asserts a merit-based world, a world in which uh, a, a, an idealistic world. I mean, literally, in the term, in the idea that 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 it is it is the conflict of ideas that wins over the entire world and not material conditions. It is a liberalism and 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 leftism as a whole are uh, are are not are not 100% in line. No, actually, President Sunday, I mean, liberalism in the past had certain uh, things that we would categorize as left wing now, but keep in mind that liberalism, even in the past, uh, while it did oppose monarchy, ultimately asserted that capitalism was the ideal form, and they haven't changed from that. So I, I understand what you're saying, but uh, I don't entirely agree. Let's continue race to identify with. I do think it's important to preface this video by saying that the left has great potential, that I am rooting for the left, but that I am, for the reasons which I'm about to list, not a leftist and likely will not be a leftist. But I think as human beings, all we have is faith and hope. And I have faith and hope in humanity. And that includes... So what, so what you're about to say is that you're going to explain things that people did that you feel distasteful, which prevents you from having a worldview that agrees with leftism. See, this is one of the problems about the discussion around leftism in general, is that leftism doesn't fucking mean anything, okay? Barely. It has a very broad definition, uh, and that broad definition gets divvied up like crazy. Uh, the left, like I talked about this, I talked about this recently in the uh, in the whole men's rights activist thing that the left can be as broad or as small as whoever's talking about it at the moment, um, and it seems weird to me that you would say, oh, I I don't I don't consider myself a leftist uh, when you're I don't know. <laughs> When I say that I consider myself left a leftist, it's because that's where my principles lie. I believe that that is the sphere in which my principles lie, and no behavior by a leftist is going to change that. A leftist being a piece of shit is just a person being a piece of shit. My beliefs are going to remain the same. Continue. people on the left and therefore I think that this video is more so my trying to advise or more so trying to put forward an alternative form of critique that isn't critique with the intent of putting down and promoting the other side or another. We'll see about that won't we? We'll see. Uh, I, I, it's always wonderful to have centrists talk down to you about how they're trying to help. I'm trying to help you. Uh, okay, sure, we'll see. The side or argument, but more so the kind of critique that is important in any political discourse and context. Coming together with our different opinions and perspectives and taking on board the criticism from outsiders, taking on what others are saying in order to improve and better ourselves. So that is where this video is coming from. Am I filming this video on Christmas Day? A thousand percent, yes. There is no rest for the wicked. I was rather sad to read a few days ago that a columnist who I follow quite regularly who writes for The Guardian, Hadley Freeman, has resigned. Hadley Friedman is a columnist. She's a writer, an author, and also a journalist of American-British descent. She's been writing for The Guardian for well over 22 years, and I've been reading her since she wrote purely about uh-oh. 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 Fashion, and then moved on to writing more about social and political issues. I was pretty surprised to hear that she had resigned because she is sort of the creme de la creme of The Guardian and everything that it tends to stand for. An appreciation of... She's not very high praise, okay? The Guardian is not exactly uh, the most respected, uh, especially on specific issues. Uh, I would argue that The Guardian has practiced journalistic malpractice with regard to its coverage of trans people. But uh, 
Are we gonna find out? Are we gonna find out that this person is a? Uh, oh, she's a gigaturf. Do we have? Do we have truth? Do we have proof of that? What did she write? Yeah. Uh, the the cre yeah the cre the creme de la creme of the shit pile is still poop. Yep. Of identity politics, of diversity, of our changing world, an appreciation for progress, criticism of elites, as well as feminism, particularly. Do you want to go to her Wikipedia? All right, let's see. What's what was her name again? What was the lady's name? Does anybody remember the name? I, I forgot her name already. Jesus Christ. My memory of ga of names is bad. Uh, hold on. Let's just rewind real quick. Hadley Freeman. There we go. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right, let's take a look. Uh... In June 2018, Freeman denounced the treatment of undocumented child immigrants arriving in America. Okay, that's based. That's based. That's good. Guardians, uh, in, in November 2018, U.S. journalists from The Guardian published an opinion piece criticizing The Guardian editorial about the Gender Recognition Act, claiming it was transphobic. In tweets, Freeman defended the editorial. We talked about that. We talked about the Gender Recognition Act shit. She has since been cited as expressing views that trans allied feminists consider transphobic. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What do we got here? There's nothing feminist. Wait a minute, I know Anna Valens. Hold on a second, I know this journalist. I love Anna Valens. Anna Valens is amazing. There's nothing feminist about attacking trans women. The Guardian had a brilliant idea for Trans Day of Visibility. Instead of honoring trans men, trans women, and non-binary people living out openly, the publication ran a piece on Saturday by feminist columnist Hadley Freeman called Don't You Just Love It When a Man Explains to You What It Means to Be a Woman. Hadley Freeman, don't you just love it when a man explains to you what it means to be a woman? By a man-sized margin, my favorite recent news story is the one about two women feminists who went to a men-only swimming session in Dulwich because, as they explained, they now self-identify as men. This is literally... Okay, let's just be clear. That is raw transphobia, okay? If you say... To a trans person or about a trans person, you are not, your gender is not valid. You are not who you say you are. You are invalid. That is just, that is definitionally transphobia, okay? You can have all kinds of opinions about uh, the world, about, about gender, about all kinds of things. But if you assert that trans women are not women and that trans men are not men, you are a transphobe. No ifs, ands, or butts about it, okay? So I just want to be clear, who this person is talking about, who Kidology is talking about, is the person who wrote this article. Don't you just love it when a man, referring to a trans person, explains to you what it means to be a woman? Okay, well that's, like what else do I need to say at this point? Now, I watched this part last night but I didn't actually look this person up. I took her word that this was going to be, you know, that this would be an actual grievance, but I shouldn't have. Freeman, oh boy, here we go. Another quote from Freeman. Contrary to what these bullies have claimed, general critical, gender critical feminists do not hate trans people. I certainly feel no anger or animosity towards trans people. The only feeling I have towards them is compassion. Not to the point where I'm willing to give up all of women's sex-based rights, though. Come the fuck on. Come the fuck on. All right, let's get back to the video. The third wave, I guess, in a way, we could say that we're heading toward fourth wave feminism. And she writes incredibly now we're well. On like nine. Even though I don't agree with her on a lot of things, I still can appreciate that she is an exceptional journalist. And so the wait, reasons wait. for... Do you agree? Wait, wait, here's a good question. You say you don't agree with her on a lot of things. Do you agree with her that trans women aren't women and trans men aren't men? Because if you do, then you are a transphobe as well. 
It is that simple. And if you don't like that, you can cry about it. And so can every other transphobe. If you can't acknowledge that people have the right to define them their own gender, because like you, you are a transphobe. I'm sorry, that's just what transphobia is, or at least one part of transphobia, a major part of it. All right, let's go. Her resignation that I heard on Woman's Hour was truly shocking. You are saying that you specifically were not allowed uh, to, to write about this. Are you saying others were and you weren't? No, um, I was specifically not allowed. I was specifically told by upper management that I wasn't allowed to write about gender stuff in about 2018, 2019, I think. And others weren't either. I know of multiple reporters who asked. Oh my God, she resigned. She resigned because they told her to stop writing shit about gender, not because they told her to stop writing in general. They literally didn't fire her. They didn't ask her to leave. They just said, please stop writing crazy bigoted shit about gender. Holy fucking shit. If they could interview, for example, Maya Forstadter during her case, Alison Bailey, um, Jester Walls. I asked about interviewing J.K. Rowling uh, and Martina Navratilova, and we were all told no. Meanwhile, you know, the, the paper. ran these long glowing profiles of trans activists such as Monroe Bergdorf and Paris Lees and Fred McConnell and I'm Good. proud to have worked at a paper that spotlit marginalized people like that. I just don't understand. Well, I do understand, mm. but it infuriated me that feminist campaigners such as Julie Bindle, who I also pitched to interview when her book came out, and J.K. Rowling were basically shut out from the paper. I okay, first of all, J.K. Rowling is not a feminist icon, okay? and is not a feminist activist either. Uh, J.K. Rowling sometimes posts on the internet about feminism and then goes to the bar with gender critical TERFs. That is not the same thing. Also, I don't even want to start on Bindle. Let's not do that. I know that upper management, you know, say, well, both sides are equally passionate. You know, it's very hard to balance both the gender activists and, you know, what people call gender critical feminists, I call reality based feminists. But the fact is only one side in that argument demands censorship. Reality. Oh God. Oh I my no God. And never had any problem with Guardian interviewing and spotlighting, uh, you know, trans activists, trans activist books. But I, I was not allowed, and nor was anyone else to in, allowed to interview gender critical feminists or you know feature are, gender critical. Are, there are some. I there's suppose one. That's the point. Kathleen is Kathleen. And and I did read an interview with Maya, but I think in the Observer. In, in the Observer, and we should say just again, if you're not familiar with the media world, the Observer is edited by a different editor. Yeah, yeah that's it right. Is, it's edited by a different editor. Okay. Alongside Hadley. Wait a minute. Did Hadley defend Kanye West? Oh my God. <laughs> Hadley Freeman wrote an article defending Kanye West. Another journalist and feminist writer, Sarah Dittum, has also announced that she is leaving The Guardian and is now going to be writing for The Sunday Times. I've additionally seen a lot of the Sunday Times, the Sunday fucking Times, the Sunday Times is a rag. The Sunday Times is a tabloid. What? Why do you, what do you, okay, if somebody was just leaving a magazine on frivolous grounds, why the fuck do you think they would have to go work at a fucking tabloid? For real. Do you think that like it's a it's a glittering move to resign from your job and then not be able to get work anywhere but a tabloid? For real. Yes, that is run by Mur Rupert Murdoch. It's a conservative tabloid. Oh god. Of these writers that I've referenced writing for a rather unknown publication which is purely online called Unheard. I've been reading Unheard for about a year now and I find it incredibly interesting because why society still needs the family conservative. Wait this is this is an article by Nick Cave? Wait isn't Nick oh, okay I, I don't want to speak out of line but why society still needs the family the year the west erased women christmas is still scarred by covid oh boy 
Oh boy. They are quite literally journalists from every single side of the political spectrum, individuals who are religious and writing from a religious oh, perspective, yeah. and individuals who are atheists and totally. writing from an atheistic perspective, and they all come together to write exceptional. <laughs> Thank goodness they have Stone Age Herbalist. Damn! Thank God they have Stone Age Herbalist here. Was the sexual revolution a government psyop? Masturbation has long been seen as a political soporific. Oh my God! Do you remember? Do you remember what I said about centrists? How centrists are people who are like incapable of thinking clearly because they un they believe that there's like a invisible there's like a giant invisible seesaw that you just have to stand in the middle of and everything will be okay and that by the way they always end up just spouting right wing talking points this is exactly why oh my dear fucking god let's go pieces and articles and essays I would highly recommend subscribing to and reading unheard this video is not what. You, you're opening the video about how the left needs to do better by directly promoting the article of the people that you're trying to talk about here. Not only is that like questionably ethical, it's also terrible from an argumentative perspective. Sponsored by them, I'm purely saying this because I am a huge fan and I think it is very, very important for us to really find journalists and journalistic writing that doesn't just reinforce our preconceived biases and our preconceived prejudice and opinions. When I saw that Hadley and Sarah had left The Guardian, it made me think about why individuals may be skeptical of or may, as we can see online at least, be leaving the left. And I think there are three. These people aren't leftists. The examples that you've used, both of the examples that you've used are people who published anti-trans articles in which they called trans women men. Not just, I'm not just talking about light confusion, like, I don't know how I feel about this terminology. No, we're talking about people who literally made arguments calling trans women men and saying that, uh, saying that trans men have no right to comp to say anything about feminism. Like, what the fuck is this? These people were never leftists. What do you mean? They didn't leave the left either. They left their jobs because they were too stupid to, to be able to write about anything except for apparently bigotry. I just... Oh my god. And imagine, this video started, this video has started as a, uh, as a, as a, uh, let me try and help you. Let me try and help the left. I need to help the left get better. We're not getting better by, like, by, by digesting without any question this bullshit that you're trying to dump in front of us. This is bullshit. You trying to make the argument that these are, like, poor, aggrieved journalists. They weren't fired. They weren't driven out. Nothing happened to them. They resigned because their bosses told them to stop writing bigotry. Useful idiot. Let's continue. Reasons that, broadly speaking, answer this question. The first, I would say, is political dogma. The left has started off with good intentions, very good intentions, particularly when it comes to representing and speaking for and giving a platform to minority issues. However, the left has largely left these good intentions in the dust in pursuit of more accessible ends, as well as more accessible causes. Citation needed? Didn't you say this was going to be an analytical video? Where's the citation? What are you talking about? Where's the citation? Where's the citation on the political dogma? What is the political dogma of the left? You, you can't just assert a claim that large. You said that this video in its description was going to be an analytical look at the left. That's not analytical. That is your feelings. This is pure feelings. namely identity politics. For instance, representing minority issues such as that of trans individuals is an exceptional and important thing. However,
then why do you support someone who is actively against it? If you say that supporting trans individuals is exceptional and important, but then you spent the entire beginning of this video literally sucking the dick of someone who was asked to stop writing bigot bigoted uh, articles on The Guardian, articles that are just literally raw transphobia, how do you square those in your head? Again, I, I just can't help but think that like centrism is like is is the product of some sort of disconnect between sections of the brain. It's like there's a there's a I don't know if it's like like meningitis or or what's it called encephalitis where your brain starts swelling and you just can't like you can no longer acknowledge like contradictory ideas. How do you square those? Tell me how can you square saying that you believe in trans rights? But you also are spending the entire beginning of this video going to bat for somebody who explicitly does not believe in trans rights, who explicitly believes trans people uh, are lying about their gender, and also believes that they should not be included in a feminist movement. I know the answer. The answer is that kidology is a fucking liar. That's the actual way. Unfortunately, this cannot be explained by encephalitis doing that at the expense of letting a woman write about gender causes issues, understandably, and is something that I would say is ultimately an example of leaving good intentions in the dust in pursuit of a far more accessible and palatable perspective. And in this, I think, regrettably, the left has very little to say, specifically the online left. I would say it causes doing that that of trans individuals is an exceptional and important thing. However, doing that at the expense of letting a woman write about gender causes issues, understandably, and- That sentence doesn't even make sense. Wait, that's actually, her sentence doesn't make sense there. Did she pre proofread her script? Doing that at the expense of letting write a about woman gender write about gender. What do you mean by that? Do you mean, like, what is that? What? I think what she meant to say is not letting a woman write about gender, but no one didn't let her write about gender. She still writes about gender. Obviously, you just promoted her website where she writes about gender. It's just that The Guardian did not want her specifically to write about gender. Not women. There are plenty of women still writing about gender at The Guardian. Not not a woman not being allowed. She was not banned from it. In fact, she wasn't even fired. What is this? This is deranged. The amount of lies is like out the gate, just so stupid. And also this just makes no fucking sense. She's trying to say the left won't allow women to write, but would allow trans women. Oh yeah, dude, that's been evident so far. Can we get a fucking, can we get a fucking? My sources that I made it the fuck up issues, understandably, and is something that I would say is ultimately an example of leaving good intentions in the dust in pursuit hey. of a far more accessible and palatable perspective. And in this, I think, regrettably, the left has very little to say, specifically the online left, has very little to say in the way of macro issues, contrary to micro issues. The left has a lot to say about micro issues and i would say that trans issues are a micro issue in that they affect a small very small Yeah, I can't believe, I can't believe that we're actually listening to a, a MLK's uh, white moderate. Listen, this, this right here, this right here fucking proves that you don't have to actually be, have white skin to be a white moderate. Micro issues. The left has a lot to say about micro issues. And I would say that trans issues are a micro issue in that they affect a small, very small. It's not a fucking micro issue to all of the trans people. And also trans people make anywhere between 0.5 to 1% of the population. You might think that 1% is a small number to your pea brain. Uh, however, I want you to understand that 1% of the population is a lot of fucking people. 
It is a lot of people's family members. It is a lot of people's partners. It is a lot of people all across the world. 1% of the world is not a small amount of people. You might think the number one is small because you are like baffled by the existence of numbers, but that is not what this is. That one out of every 100 people is not a small number of people. Mix Dizzy says, if she lives in the UK and she's black in the UK, black people in the UK only make up 3% of the population. By this logic, then it should be okay to, I don't agree with that exact wording, but that by her own logic, it should be, it should be considered a micro issue. Black people's rights in the, in the UK should be considered a, a, a micro issue, which is fucking stupid. Oh my fucking God. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh, she does live in the UK. Okay. Let's. Can we continue? Let's, let's fucking continue. Small minority of the modern population. Identity politics relative to politics in general is a microcosm and a micro issue of overall politics. But yes, as as our as our locks in chat says, one percent of Earth is eighty million people. You really think that that's a micro issue, an issue that is affected that is affecting at least eighty million people? Come on. That seems to have dominated all politics among the left. And then when it comes to the complexity and the overwhelming presence of macro issues, namely that affecting the majority of people, namely economics, particularly neoliberal economic frameworks, the contemporary left has very little to say. And this includes the left-wing populist movement in North America and Northern Europe. The second reason I would say that... Sorry, I didn't actually understand her point there. It dragged on, I think that was one sen entire sentence for the entire thing. Can I... And I would say that politics, but that seems to have dominated all politics among the left. That's not the left's choice. The right, the right is pushing a blood libel against trans people in the United States right now and in the UK. This is not, that is not the choice of the left. The left has to battle where the, where the oppression is. The oppression is being aimed directly, it's like a gun being pointed directly into the fucking forehead of every trans person in the country. The right is obsessed with us. The, the left didn't choose that battle. The left is engaging in that battle because the left has fucking principles. And then when it comes to the complexity and the overwhelming presence of macro issues, namely that affecting the majority of people, namely economics, particularly neoliberal economic frameworks, the contemporary left has very little to say. And this in That is so untrue. That is so untrue. The idea that the left has very little to say about neoliberalism just search the word neoliberalism on YouTube and I guarantee you every single major lefty left leaning even channel has done a video taking down and addressing and educating people on neoliberalism. Just you cannot be this wrong. This is this is the biggest fucking my sources that, uh, my I, sources made that I made the up. fuck up moment. It is seriously just endless. My sources are that I made it the fuck up, made it the fuck up, made it the fuck up, made it the fuck up. Bullshit. Bullshit. All bullshit. Includes the left-wing populist movement in North America and Northern Europe. The second route. Also, it's a, it is a little bit funny. It is a little bit funny when the most recent major populist left uh, uh, uprising in recent memory is the, was the George Floyd protests all across the United States. That's the most recent, like large scale, uh, left, left, left populist movement in the United States. Um, the, the, our, the idea that that was not valid because of identity, when it is very clear that policing in America is an identity-based issue, once again, the left didn't choose that battle. The left is engaging on that front because that is where the fucking oppression is. Like, how can you, 
uh, how can you be so irresponsibly hand wavy towards this? Anyway, it just comes off as racism. Let's just, let, can I just be honest about that? It just unironically comes off as racism. Oh, thank you so much. Can you bring me up one of those body armor uh, drinks too? That'd be incredible. Um, Fresca would be fantastic. Thank you. Anyway, let's continue. Danny Fallen says, uh, Demon Mama said that she was acting like a white moderate, which, yeah, I was just browsing her videos and she and she has a video in which she says that she feels much closer related to white women than people of her own skin color. Reason I would say that the left is losing people or the reason why people are skeptical of the left is... The left isn't losing anyone, again. My, My sources, sources that I made, that it, the I made it the fuck up. The left has only been growing. The left is not shrinking. There are more leftists every single day. There are more people on the left. The left, the way that she defines the left, okay? Not the way I do, just to be clear. The way she defines the left, which includes liberals, is the biggest political faction in America. They're not losing anybody. The Republicans have to literally break the electoral system in order to win. They have to gerrymander in order to win because they do not have the people. They do not have the numbers on their side. What is this person talking about? What is this fucking talking about? Is the modern left likes to revise history according to the postmodern staple of there being no grand narratives and no universal truths. And what? the left's adoption of this postmodern state. Right. Conspiracy theorizing. Left. Postmodern theorizing? This is not to say that the far right does not revise history. Conspiracy theorizing is a staple of revising history, popular among those on the extreme right. It's not even on the extreme right. Everyday righties engage in deep levels of a conspiracy theory. This is something that we saw with the fucking Balenciaga shit. These people live on conspiracy theory. The most popular shows on the right, not just the far right, on the milk toast right, are conspiracy spouting uh, uh, freaks. Rush Limbaugh was the most popular right-wing rate or po political radio show in the fucking world. And that dude loved his conspiracy theories. Alex Jones. It, I will say Alex Jones is what I would consider to be far right, but, but uh, not any of the others. Not, t I mean, Tucker Carlson is, but his viewership is very broad. However, I will get into later, conspiracy theories are far more persuasive in line with anti-establishment thinking than postmodernism. What does anti-establishment thinking have to do with anything? Oh my God. Oh my God. This person is, is, holy shit. The left has a less persuasive and harmonious relationship to postmodernism, e.g. Marxism is antithetical to it. Huh? Is this just, is this just actual nonsense? People has led it into a lot of contradictions and therefore into a lot of infighting. This infighting distracts from those macro issues, from those macro concerns and conversations and results in a lot of infighting that mainly in this day and age revolves around particularly trans issues or anything pertaining to Actually, I would not consider the infighting to be around trans issues. That's a very weird fixation. That's an incredibly weird fixation. Um, if I was to say that there was any infighting, the biggest example of left-wing infighting was the Bernie versus Biden schism, which had nothing to do with trans issues. It, it's weird. It's almost like this person has a weird obsession with trans people. Do you think maybe we're gonna see that happen as this goes on? Uh, let's continue. Critical. Oh, also, also, by the way, sorry, sorry. What would you call, um, what would you call what happened in the, in the, uh, the house recently? What would you call that, uh, the 18 repeated votes, um, in the American House of Representatives that was, by the way, purely, uh, would you call that infighting between the right? Because it was the biggest example of right-wing infighting we've seen. Far deeper than any left-wing infighting we've seen in any recent, me in any recent memory. 
That was like one of the most blatant examples of right-wing infighting. Right now, the political candidates uh, for for the right-wing position, Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, the two sort of front runners for the Republican uh, presidency uh, coming up in this, in this uh, recent thing are literally just calling each other uh, freaks and pedophiles. Like, 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 Donald Trump has been spending more time shitting on Do Ron DeSantis than anything else. I, I just don't get this. None of this makes any sense theory. to me. As we know, critical theory holds a paramount place within leftist discourse. And this is completely understandable. And in fact, I would argue a very good thing. However, when that critical theory and that criticism is tearing apart the very ideology, the very perspective, the very foundation of the left, there is a bit of a problem. It makes me cringe to identify as a lefty personally, just in terms of my personal politics and mm -hmm. my beliefs, when I see how a lot of the left engages in... This is a video called Trans Protesters Lose It by Abba and Preach. Now, I don't know who these people are. I've, uh, I've never in my life heard of these people as lefties, so I, I, I find it weird that he would say, I'm scared to call myself a lefty, because I've never heard you call yourself a lefty. But all right, let's continue. Conversations yep. and stuff like this. Their MRAs, is that for real? You get what I'm saying? What it's like the trans women what, what trans women in sports. Yeah. These motherfuckers are just saying, oh, you came in 17th, <coughs> not 16th? Well, you're a fucking loser. So why are you complaining about the trans woman taking your spot? Or they're saying stuff like, who cares? If you weren't good enough to make it with a trans woman president, then what does it matter? It's like, you're, you're stealing scholarship, huh? whole work-life opportunities from athletes. Like, not everything is about placing in the top three. Some of it is just about being even in the race itself. That's a huge honor. For people who go to the Olympics, they know a lot of them are not going to win. But the honor of being in the Olympic Village to represent your country proudly, to be able to compete on that kind of stage where everyone is actually watching athletics with intention. Did she think that this, did she think this was going to be like a, like a sick own on the left? This is Manosphere content. Okay, I see. I'm looking through their videos right now. Let, let me give you some titles. Uh, oh, it's all Andrew Tate stuff. It's making, oh, there's a video making fun of trans people. Uh, the female gaming experience. They tried to cancel her for talking about women's experience. Hmm. If your wife spends more than you can make, you should make more money. Uh, making fun of fat people. A video making fun of people they think is ugly. An incel video. Ah, interesting. Super interesting. Super curious. Super curious. Let's continue. Experience and stuff. It's, it's life changing. And so when I see left engages like dishonest, well, fuck women's sports. Who needs anyways? I'm like, really? People said they're talking. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, yeah. So many. Oh, yeah. So many trans people say that. Oh, I love it. So many trans athletes just go up and go, who needs women's sports anyway? Yeah, that's a thing that's happened. My source is that I made it the fuck up. And so it's like what I'm seeing. Senator, Senator Armstrong, have mercy. I'm so sorry for your goddamn voice. We're going to have to be using Senator Armstrong so much. With like a lot of this stuff is that the way that they engage with this stuff is like violent. Mm -hmm. It's violent or extremist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, oh yeah, those trans people, all those trans people, uh, 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 showing up with their guns and rifles to protest, uh, I don't know, women's sports? Oh yeah, totally, bro. Totally, man. Oh god, we are in delusion world. Okay, real quick, just a small break from this. Can, can you guys, can I point out, remember earlier today when I said that like, uh, that in our current state of politics, that we are engaged in a battle for reality? Um, that's, this is the type of shit that I mean. These people live in a reality of their own writing. They have, there is nothing that they are basing this off of. They saw a clip of, of some, apparently some trans person who was angry, and now they are under the belief that trans people are always violent and want to outlaw women's sports. Just actually demented. 
we live in a world where there is no agreement on reality. These people live in a totally different reality than us. We may as well be in like, you may as well be in like, uh, like, I don't know, fucking medieval, medieval, uh, Spain and, and encountering like 20 different cults to like various gods. Some of them are worshiping the Druidic gods. Some of them are worshiping the, the Hellenic gods. There's a whole bunch of uh, like six different flavors of Christian missionary. None of them can agree who's the actual God and all of them are telling you that you should believe in the true God. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Mm -hmm. And I don't identify with that even though my politics left. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I believe that. Feminists do not need to do better in reaching out. Is it, wow. like, doesn't it seem really weird how defensive these- Uh-oh. Oh no. Is Vosh, is a Vosh clip gonna be used in favor of a right-wing narrative? Oh God, no. Oh no, it is. Oh God. Feminists do not need to do better in reaching out. Is it, like, doesn't it seem really weird how defensive these people are about the concept of doing better to expand a movement? I, I would feel this is something they would have, like, a default appreciation for, right? Like, in concept, shouldn't we always do better? And I would say that the third reason why I think the left is not gay. This person gave Vosh positive attention on his stream. Vosh was under the impression she was chill and was positive towards her. You need to tell him to do a segment on it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, uh, not my business. Uh, interesting, interesting, uh, interesting clip of, of Vosh to be used here. Gaining as much traction as it ought to in this day and age, as represented by Hadley and Sarah, is a reason that I know for a fact, I know for a fact that, um, I know for a fact that if Vosh saw this video, he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't agree with what is being said. But I can understand if she, like, was kind uh-oh. Inter-transracial adoption? In this case, no. Society isn't ready for interracial adoption? I'm a different race, get me out of here being adopted into a racist family? Oh god, oh no. Oh no. I guess is rather mean, but this is a video of honesty and it comes from a place of I believe- Vodka says Vosh didn't actually do a proper segment on Kidology. Well, that's unfortunate. All Vosh did was make a joke about DMCAing the video. Well, okay. Shame, cause uh, yeah. Good faith. The left is truly starting to remind me of Comrade Napoleon. Mix Dizzy says, I get why some people, well, I get why Palace Riot has been upset with Vosh lately. Sometimes his approach or his naivety, as you say, often allows bad actors to take advantage of him. Um, I don't know if I would describe it as naivety. I don't think that's the right word. Uh, I think sometimes uh, that... I think sometimes that when Vosh gets into a conflict online, he will say inflammatory things that uh, later get used by right-wingers as proof. Like they'll say, well, look, Vosh is a successful leftist and look at what he says about the left, which I know that he doesn't intend for that to be the case, but I think it's something that we have to think about sometimes anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I do think he's right. I think I always, of course, I, I Vosh is my friend. I, I genuinely agree with a lot of the things that Vosh says. I do sometimes think that in his, in his approach to Twitter conflict, especially. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. It's okay, Mixed Dizzy. I'm not. I know that that. I know that you're not trying to shit on Vosh in, in that. Uh, you were quoting somebody else anyway. Somebody who I don't always agree with, but uh, I do think they post some things that are accurate. I think some things that they go a little across the line on. Anyway, let's get back to the video. President Sunday says in in uh, in George Orwell's 19 Animal Farm, Napoleon was corrupted by the power and wealth that came with administering the farm and began colluding with the humans to maximize pigs' profits by exploiting the other animals. This is a terrible. This analogy is completely nonsensical. Yeah, I think we've dropped the analogy so far. I haven't seen anything about the the uh, the animal farm stuff. I think I think she just forgot about it and dropped it and is continuing on. Yeah because the left, at least in North America. Oh, 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 she did just bring it back. 
Okay, well, joke's on me then. And in Northern Europe is lazy. The left is lazy insofar as getting very comfortable in its own self-righteousness and in its own bubble of information. Because on the one hand, the left lacks expertise. For instance, in the way of understanding transgenderism relative to transsexualism, say, and also in understanding righteousness and in its own bubble of information. Because on the one hand, the left lacks expertise. For instance, the left lacks expertise in the way of understanding transgenderism relative to transsexualism. The left lacks expertise, such as in the way of understanding transgenderism relativism to relative to transsexualism. What? I don't even, I, I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. And secondly, the left, like, I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Is she trying to say that the left doesn't know the difference between a transgender person and a transsexual person? They don't know the science? What? How would you, how would you even evidence that? And what do you mean when you say that? Because the science is very clear. The science, as we understand it to this day, uh, strongly supports the concept of being transgender. That transgender is a real thing and transsexual is as much of a real thing if, as, as transgender. Stop being lazy, do more streams, Demon Mama. I know, I have to. I should debate her? Yeah, that would be interesting. Sure, I'd do a debate. Say, and also in understanding the medical knowledge that is needed behind transgender identities. Hello, editing me. I would have the medical knowledge that is required behind transgender identities? Okay, I'm really sorry. Okay, I need to be completely honest. This is gibberish. You are, this is a, this is a unintelligible script. The words that you are saying don't make any sense. That, that is not a sensical, they, they, they lack expertise. The left lacks expertise in the way of understanding transgenderism relative to transsexualism, say, and also in understanding the medical knowledge that is needed behind transgender identities. That is nonsense. That is literally nonsense. That does not mean anything. That is, li it's literal world sa word salad. And also, what is it even supposed to mean? I can't even parse what is intended to be said there. Is she trying to say that the left doesn't recognize trans people's need to medically transition? The left is the literal only faction in politics that recognizes the medical need for trans people to transition. Oh my God. But hasn't that a good example of this is the controversy surrounding Leah Thomas. She is not Oh, come the fuck on. By the way, this right here is where is is the furthest I've seen into the video. Known for being the first openly transgender athlete to win an NCAA Division I national championship. Now, Leah's success and identity opened up a huge conversation and controversy surrounding what you mean is that transphobic freaks with no scientific basis freaked the fuck out, made death threats, and threatened Leah Thomas for weeks. They plastered her face all over hate screeds, all over fucking the, the Daily Stormer. These people were writing about Leah Thomas. They didn't spark a huge conversation and controversy. Bigots freaked out in the same way that they freaked out about, uh, uh, about the first, uh, the first African-American athletes that were allowed to participate. They did the same thing to them that they're doing now to trans people. It's the same shit. Don't fucking euphemize this shit. It didn't spark a huge conversation. It was bigotry. 
everything in this video so far from this so-called fucking apolitical centrist asshole has been nothing but right-wing drivel. We've literally received absolutely nothing but pablum towards the left and right-wing propaganda. I fucking hate centrists. Holy shit. Transgender woman competing in women's sports and divisions in professional sporting events. For instance, this article is from a left-leaning publication and it contradicts... What's the left-leaning publication? Let's see it. The Leah... What is this? What is this? Throughout. The data doesn't tell a... What a citation! This article is from a left-leaning so publication and contradicts itself throughout. Hold on, let's look it up. Let's find out. Sports.yahoo.com This is a this is an article published by Yahoo Sports which was republished from the fucking independent. This person is so dishonest it's unbelievable. This is so fucking unbelievable. Also Oh, we're going to different talk about story, this. story, as the title of the article suggests. Instead, a very mixed and complicated story that is obviously going to be misunderstood is told. The author says, and I quote, The scientific evidence is mixed, and post-HRT trans women do not currently dominate professional sport. And the thing- Hold on a second. The title says, Critics accuse trans swimming star Leah Thomas of having an unfair advantage. The data tells a different story. The data does not say that she has an advantage. The scientific evidence is, is mixed and post HRT trans women do not currently dominate professional sport. Critics are saying she has an advantage. The data does not agree with them. That is not contradiction. This, this person, like again, oh no, oh my God, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm actually, I, I told you, I told you this fucking shit was going to trigger the shit out of me. That is not a contradiction. That is literally the truth. The right wing ran with an insanely bigoted, disgusting propaganda campaign against a totally innocent athlete who did nothing but achieve well in her field. Leah Thomas was not some kind of gigantic trans activist. Leah Thomas was not like a terrorist who was secretly blowing up straight people's houses. Leah Thomas was a swimmer who won something. And the right freaked out and said, Oh, you're, you have an advantage. You have a biological advantage. And they had no fucking evidence for that. Holy fucking shit. Kidology? More like fucking kid brain mixed and post hrt trans women do not currently dominate professional sport and the thing is everything in that statement is true trans women don't dominate professional sports similarly to how women don't dominate professional sports what, what do you, what do you mean what what is that supposed to oh my god oh. That is one of the one of the stupidest things I've ever heard ut uh, uttered in my entire life. Saying trans women do not dominate professional sports in when there is a narrative that trans women have a biological advantage. What saying that trans women do not dominate professional sports is pointing out the fact that trans women aren't winning in men's leagues and they aren't dominating in women's leagues either uh, either which means that the narrative that trans women have a biological advantage is fucking propaganda what the fuck is this response okay i'm just gonna say it kidology does not have a functioning brain i don't know what's going on here but there is there is not a functioning brain in sight here holy fucking shit that is the dumbest, that is one of the stupidest transphobe arguments I've ever encountered. I have literally argued with dyed in the wool transphobes. I have argued with dyed in the wool homophobes and most of them wouldn't even dare uttering something so incredibly fucking stupid.
oh, don't worry, President Sunday. We already, we already looked at this. We already looked at this one. You guys remember this shit? This should have been the sign. You know what this is? You know what this is right here? Hold on a second. Let me just show you. This political spectrum overview is this. It's this. Hold on, I'm gonna show you right here. There we go. Your doctor asks you to draw a clock. Your doctor asks you to draw the political spectrum and this is what you return. And it's this, it's the same thing. They're the same fucking thing. I'm not kidding you. Can you tell me? Can you tell me this is not it? Somebody asked you to, to, to like portray the political world and you end up drawing this fucking shit. Jesus fucking Christ. Holy shit. All right, let's try to proceed here. I, I don't know. I don't know how fucking stupid you can be. Like this argument right here is a DJ Mule level stupid argument. Just phenomenally dumb. W women don't dominate professional sports. Women dominate women's sports, don't they, you fucking idiot? The problem here is that you are commenting on a culture war issue where right-wingers are claiming that trans women are dominating women's sports. And what this is pointing out correctly and truthfully is that trans women don't dominate in men's sports or in women's sports. Gay Fesh says, maybe she has a doctor who is observing her encephalitis without letting her know she has it. Yeah, maybe I should stop being so, maybe I should stop being so cruel. How do I know that she's not currently, uh, currently afflicted by encephalitis and has a corrupt doctor that won't tell her what she has? Oh yeah, totally. Man, this is a special level of stupidity. Holy fucking shit. Only a small subsection of the human population compete professionally of men and men's professional sports, of women and women's professional sports. Anti-corporatist says, the fuck is a DJ mule? Look it up. Search up DJ mule and you're going to see what I'm talking about. You'll find Demon Mama's video on DJ mule. You'll be in for a treat. Was I being ableist? Sorry. And so inevitably, in terms of trans women, only a small percentage of trans women in the small percentage of trans women. That listen, listen, hold on, hold on. I need to issue a sorry. You know what? This video creator was correct. The left is tearing it apart, tearing itself apart. And it's my fault. I need to issue an apology to everyone out there with undiagnosed encephalitis that is currently making YouTube videos under the name Kidology. Uh, I, I'm, I'm extremely sorry for engaging in a dark in an, in an, in a, in a dark and evil form of ableism towards uh, video essay, smug video essayists with undiagnosed encephalitis under the name Kidology. I'm, I'm really really sorry. My apologies. I'm very, very sorry. They are on this planet are going to compete in professional sports and this obviously takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of training, a lot of money, a lot of investment. And it is also true to say that the scientific evidence is mixed. Every sport This is not true also, by the way. The scientific evidence on trans people is not mixed. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to take a moment here to shout out a, a fellow video, a, 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 or not a fellow, I'm not a video essayist, but a video essayist by the name of Jangles Science Lad. Jangles Science Lad published a uh, analysis, a broad analysis of all uh, of all of the current studies uh, on trans uh, sports, uh, on, on trans bodies and how they relate to sports. Uh, Jangles Science Lad is uh, a credentialed and practicing uh, a, a practitioner of sports of sports medicine. Uh, he is about as qualified as it comes. He has a Bachelor of Science specifically focusing on sports medicine uh, and and nutrition and wellness. Uh, he's literally qualified to do that type of work and he published a fantastic video. No, the evidence is not mixed. Trans people do not have a, a meaningful advantage in any sport uh, with the exception of, I believe, rowing. I believe that the only evidence that there has been shown is that um, rowing 
uh, it, people who have been on hormones for less than one year have a slight advantage in rowing. And I believe that's literally the only one uh, that, that there was any sort of uh, measurable advantage. Uh, outside of that, there is no evidence whatsoever. However, as I will note once again, the right wing is pushing without any evidence the idea that trans people have a dominant advantage in sports. And there is no evidence that that is true. Even if you were able to currently say that there was some level of biological advantage, which once again, the science disagrees with you on that. But even if you were able to produce it, it clearly is not enough of an advantage to give uh, trans people, uh, specifically trans women, an advantage against other athletes. So if there is a biological advantage, which there doesn't seem to be evidence of, it's not enough to actually let them win things. So why does it matter? is different and this should in my humble opinion be left up to the experts and to the professional sporting authorities themselves this is going to take a lot of time and a lot of understanding flashy job in chat says speaking of her stupid quote-unquote science arguments i've watched a bit of her interracial adoption video and i will say very frankly that it unironically sounds like the arguments of segregationists from the civil rights era but with progressive linguistics paste, uh, pasted on and e uneven applications of her warped view of reality. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. What have we stumbled on? What have we fucking stumbled on here? What den, what nest of, 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 of villainy and derangement have we stumbled upon? In fact, a very nuanced perspective, which I heard on this by a transgender individual, political analyst Jordan Evans, I think is important, but is one- Okay, hold on a second. How much we want to bet that this isn't going to be nuanced at all? That is systematically and routinely deemed to be transphobic. So I am not a professional athlete. Uh, the closest thing I have ever done to anything athletic was I used to do competitive show choir. I don't feel really qualified to make carte blanche statements about whether or not trans women should compete in every kind of sport. And I understand that that is kind of... That's a hard pill to swallow. And for me, my first inclination is to approach everything through a lens of inclusivity. But at the same time, I also can't speak accurately to every kind of sport and the different things that go into it. The nuanced statement here, the nuanced statement is, I don't know because I've never done sports, so I don't really know. Is that a nuanced statement? Is this the best that Kidology can bring to the table? So I really think in these instances, the decisions are best left up to it's the professional governing bodies that dictate these. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the decisions are best left up to the governing to the professional governing bodies. Well, guess what, everybody? Great news. Every major professional sport governing body has already accepted the fact that trans people do not have an advantage in sports, including the Olympic committees. Wow. Holy shit, her own source disagrees with her fucking stupid argument. These particular sports. And just going back to the article that I referenced from The Independent, in my opinion, it was so poorly argued that the final sentence completely contradicts its primary thesis, that transgender professional athletes have little advantage over their female counterparts. And I quote, Sports physiologist Dr. Ross Tucker told the New York Times that Leah Thomas is the manifestation of the scientific evidence. The reduction in testosterone did not remove her biological... That's not a contradiction. That's, that's them giving somebody who disagrees a, a, that's them portraying the p opinion of someone who disagrees. That is them doing what you supposedly want us to do as centrists. They are saying, this guy disagrees. But notice that his argument says Leah Thomas is the manifestation of scientific evidence. So what you're telling me is the, that in this sports physiologist, okay, in this sports physiologist's mind, his idea of scientific evidence is that if a trans person ever wins anything at all, if a trans person ever wins, that means it's proof that transphobia is correct. One guy's opinion. Man, this is fucking stupid. This is infuriatingly stupid. And it's really funny because this is in a segment that's called lazy politics versus labor. 
You want to talk about laziness. This is one of the laziest videos I've ever fucking seen in my entire life. This is literally Tim Pool tier laziness. This is almost like teetering on the quartering level of laziness, where you literally don't even think about the words that you're saying. You just grab things that kind of look the shape that you want, and you don't even read to think about whether they agree with you or not. You are the fucking kidology. You are the absolute fucking pinnacle of lazy politics. Unbelievable advantage and that is the end of the article Holy a very fuck. confusing article and it is a lot easier to just say that somebody is transphobic as opposed to actually just having a conversation with them did anyone call did anyone call that one lady that you just showed that one lady who was just talking about trans sports and said that she doesn't know because she's never played sports before D did did she get called a transphobe or is she doing just fine because You've not provided any evidence of people calling her transphobic for saying what she said. AKA, there is no su support for this stupid argument. This is literally just a uh, kidology spitting out her general feelings in a, in a weird, disjointed stream of consciousness. My source is that I made it the fuck up and actually conceding a very hard fact of the matter, for instance, at least according to current mixed evidence in science. And this is something for the experts, for scientists, for actual sporting professionals and their associations and boards of expertise. And as I will get into later, this is something that the online left is most guilty of, I would say. And I think that is compromise on specific issues where expertise can should be central. That is compromise on what it. Good night, Windleby. I know you're probably making a wise choice by getting out while you can. I'm suffering severe mental damage from this. She has a video series where she actively analyzes the Squid Game series, and she's wrong about almost everything. She thinks it's about bureaucracy. How? How do you, how do you come to that conclusion? Wow, Windleby, I'm envious of you. that this is something that is really to its disadvantage. Sports scientist Ross Tucker's very, I would say, empathetic and nuanced arguments have been disregarded. Leftist commentators and I'll individuals the in the comment list. section of this article labeled him as transphobic. Rather than engaging with the science or with Shouldn't transgender unequivocally dominate? That commentary misunderstands how you assess advantage. For a trans woman to win, she still has to be good enough at the base level without the advantage in order to parlay that advantage into winning women's events. If I was in the Tour de France and you gave me a bicycle with a 100 watt motor, I wouldn't win the Tour de France. I'd do better than I would have done without it, but I wouldn't win. Does my failure to win prove that the motors don't give me an advantage? Of course not. My failure says more about my base level of performance than it does about the motor. So he's saying, when in the face of evidence, in the face of, of him being confronted with the unreality of his situation, he decides to say that no, actually trans women are just uniquely bad at sports. Do you understand why people might have called this fucking idiot a transphobe? Do you understand why people might have come to that conclusion? This is literal children brain logic. Experts, the entire field, which- Uh, commenters called me transphobic when I said that trans women are lazy and that's why they lose. They have a biological advantage because they have testosterone and they're men. The men, oh, and then they called me transphobic. Woo! Which is 
really and truly the foundation of modern thinking, is dismissed. This, in my opinion, is simply the easy way out. I've also noticed recently that with the discourse on transracialism and or relative to transgenderism, there is no expertise or knowledge on the left about how the two differ. Yet, on the other hand, what? Can we go through that once again? I've also noticed recently that that with the discourse on transracialism and or relative to transgenderism, there is no expertise or knowledge on the left about how the two differ. Yet, on the other hand, complete obedience to that distinction is, in, is, in, is expected. Again, unintelligible. This is not this is not a understandable sentence. I've also noticed recently that with the discourse on transracialism and or relative to transgenderism. That doesn't what it, I'm sorry, am I just am I just am I going insane or do British people have a completely different rule set of rules of grammar and sentence structure? This is a cognito hazard. Discourse on transracialism and or relative to transgenderism? ...does not completely agree or is not... Yeah, I know, I know. I need to remember the fucking clock. Remember the clock. Rem remember the clock. ...completely obedient to that position. Actually, sorry. I know how we can do this. I know how that we can... I know how we can do this. There we go. All right, let's continue, everybody. We can continue as uh as 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 previously let's go one is automatically labeled some kind of phobia or exiled complete obedience and compliance is expected to the left's perspective on social issues and identities without by who by who what are you even talking about can i have a source can i have an example can i have even one example of complete obedience who's the authority that's demanding complete obedience what are you talking about what what sort of fucking fantasy world do you live in it's just like fucking 1984. this is the this is oh my god question being versus becoming has always been a hot topic in philosophy are you born a woman or do you become a woman simone de beauvoir asked and she said you become one gender is a performance uh, you actually perform it every day and saraswati extended to race one becomes white one becomes black it's a social construct a performance now there's a big problem there you can't compare the two that would be very dishonest we think that's wrong the rules of gender and race are always changing. And given this, the question that really matters isn't whether individuals like Diallo and Krug are in fact black given our present rules of racial classification. Notice that what she says on the bottom here, an incredibly, wait, hold on, I'm sorry, let me just, let me just go back here. So her commentary says, Alice proceeds to state that the transgenderism and racial transracialism uh, cannot be compared because we just shouldn't. And then she goes Very on dishonest. to give reasons why you shouldn't do that. And then she says an incredibly biased article written by two leftist academics is then used as evidence. The argument itself is poor and contradictory. Bitch, you really, really should not be calling anyone out for fucking poor and contradictory arguments. Like, it's literally the description of your video completely fucks you up on that front. Also, notice that the, the text that she puts on the screen is actively, is actively contradicted by what we hear and see. We think that's wrong. The rules of gender and race are always changing. And given this, the question that really matters isn't whether individuals like Diallo and Krug are in fact black given our present rules of racial classification, but whether they should be, should be, accepts the fact that what gender the argument tries to refute essentialism with essentialism. All black people across the world with their different cultures, interclass issues and lives experience intergenerational inequalities and trauma, which transgender and queer individuals don't. What? That has nothing to do with what's being said here and also isn't true.
What society exists in the current world where trans people aren't subject to an insane amount of, oh my God, no, we can't. We have to just move, we have to just keep going. We have to, we're never gonna get through this. On the other hand, figuring out what a woman really is or uh, who really is black leads us to argue in a essentialist framework. Basically, a woman is someone- Also, who is this? What's this channel? This is, this is her evidence? This is the first piece of evidence that we've actually received? Uh, Al is this, uh, is this Alice Stevens? Is that who this is? Who is this? Does anybody know who this is? Does anybody know Alice Capel? Okay, so Alice Capel. I want to start this video by showing you- Alice Capel is like a 236 subscriber channel, apparently and did a video on this, and apparently that's the evidence that the online left, uh, that the online left doesn't know anything about anything, apparently. This is literally, by the way, I just want you to note, this is the first example that we've been provided, and all that she's been able to do with this example is provide one person saying something that she doesn't like. She actively, Kidology, I should say, Kidology actively lies about what's going on in the clip with the subtitles, which is very manipulative. Never. Whatever. And a black person is someone with, I don't know, black skin. Stepping out of that essentialist framework allows us to take into account all the elements, cultural, social, economic, that can help us understand who should be considered as a woman and who should be considered as black. In the case of blackness, inequality accumulates intergenerationally in the US. Sociologists point at weathering, inheritance gaps between black and white households as proof of that. Now, obviously, gender is not a historical. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, by the way. I'm not reading any more of the, the manipulative trash that Kidology writes on the bottom of these. This is just like the laziest and also most ineffective uh, like manipulation tactic I can imagine. Um, if like, who is gonna stop to read this shit? No one. This is just, it's ineffective. It's a bad propaganda, but it is still propaganda. Women, queer people, as a class of people, inherit a history of discrimination. But as an individual, they don't accumulate the consequences of the health and economic consequence of being a woman or trans or queer, if that makes sense. On the other hand, black people, Asian people, people of color, in France we would be targeting maybe the grandkids, kids of African and Maghreb immigrants, um, do inherit it both on a community and individual level. You know, if your great-grandparents, grandparents, parents have faced discrimination, you will inherit all that baggage. It's not the same for queer people, trans people, women, except if your great-grandparents, grandparents and parents were openly queer. I'm sure some of you are thinking, this sounds like a dream. <laughs> well, I guess we'll end it here for today. There is no need for explanation, for understanding, or for education. If you don't understand, or are not willing to understand, for reasons that may be completely personal to you, you are instinctively labelled and put into the same category as individuals whom we would call Nazis, fascists, alt-right and... Maybe you are. You probably are put into groups called Nazis, fascists, etc. But people who don't understand don't behave like you. Kidology, you have just endlessly lied in this video. You have lied in defense of transphobes. Blatant lies. Lies that can be verified by fucking pausing the screen and reading what you said was said and seeing that that's not actually true. Like, maybe the reason you get called a fascist and a Nazi is because you go the extra mile. By the way, I'm gonna make the clock just a little bit bigger every single time that we get a sentence that just literally doesn't make any sense. When we get a sentence that is just grammatically and, and, and structurally bungled, I'm gonna make the clock just a little bit bigger. Individuals, And in that, I believe, comes a form of laziness. A form of laziness that is not at all conducive to doing good politics. Politics is not only action. Politics is labor. I, I understand that Twitter doesn't give a lot of room for nuance. I agree with this tweet. I want to add to it. My issue with the left isn't so much that they give brain dead advice. It's more like the left doesn't care to give much of any advice to young men specific to issues that matter to young men. It may seem kind of- 
you know what this is? This is like this is like this is like the right. This is like the 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 foot soldiers of the right. The the little centrists with the fence jammed up their ass so far that it comes out their mouth, trying to be like, look, Vosh, see, we agree with you. You should be on our side. It's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate that like within a week after this thing, basically the exact same thing that I said would happen from this uh, from this stupid ass uh, bitch ass discourse is happening right now, which is that people who accepted right wing framing allow for the right to immediately use this this thing as an example of like the right eating itself and that the left is actually definitely bad and hates men. <sighs> kind of like trivial, but I'm talking about like masculinity, dating, that kind of Fort, stuff. Fortnite says Demon Mama just keeps predicting the future. The reason I predict the future is because I've lived a thousand lives in the span of my own. I have seen a thousand discourses rise and fall. I intricately understand the tactics of the right, and I know the types of things that they hunt for. I know the types of things that desperate propagandists will reach for. Also, notice notice the subtitles on this. Vosh makes a brilliant point about this when talking about incels masculinity in the left. This is like the, f and also links to the video. Literally, this is a, this is like a level of like a dick sucking simpery that I can't even believe. Stuff, uh, the, like stuff like that is really important to young men. Lucky if Spyro that like, bothers you. If, if also, yes, I do want to point out as Gayfesh says, he is not making the same point that Kidology is. However, the entire discourse was framed around the idea that the left is the reason that the right that the the MR, right wing MRA movement is successful, which is a fucking stupid idea. And accepting that premise fucked the discourse from the get go. I just I truly just want you to understand that. If it's frustrating that young guys are kind of like fixated on that, I'm sorry, that's literally just life, okay? And and the left just doesn't see these issues as worthwhile, which is a bit frustrating because like there are experiences with like femininity and 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 like youth, like like for girls or whatever, that the left seems to care a little bit more about because it, it gets under discussed broadly. But what you have to understand is that if you want to sell an ideology, you can't only talk about the stuff that other parts of society aren't willing to talk about. You have to give a holistic social theory. If the left would just like take a deep breath and go, okay, we need to get guys to touch some grass and like be chill and not feel crazy and secure about how they are and their masculinity, blah, blah, blah. Like we would have this in the bag, man. Look, all I'm saying is it's not a coincidence that historically speaking, the most successful leftist movements have had holistic messaging on gender and sexual ideology. Like seriously, go to the Bolsheviks, go to the Maoists, go to uh, the union trade workers and the anarchists of the early 20th century. Okay, bro, just, Yeah, bro. Yeah, totally. You know, you know, I really think that Stalin had a great opinion when he when he talked about the need for the, you know, patriarchal family. Oh, whatever. There was not this like aversion to masculinity or to like the promotion of male social spaces. Quite the opposite, because a lot of these movements were pretty sexist because it was a hundred years ago. They were at least willing to talk about these issues. I don't know how any of this could have gotten done if there was this like tetchy unwillingness to appeal to these very basic drives for political belief. This no, no, we're not doing the discourse again. I won't. I just, I just think that was a... <sighs> Let's focus on the brain rot. Idea that I hear a lot from the left of educate yourself or put in the labor for yourself because emotional labor is not something that we are willing to do. I can't stand people who call themselves leftists and do not understand that people do not want to do reproductive labor. Like cooking is a whole ass thing, dude. Is in no way con. Cited DJ Mule positively. 
She signed DJ Mule supportively. Oh! 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 I can't even believe it. I want you to understand something, by the way. The only reason that this person knows about DJ Mule, by the way, is because of me. The only reason anyone knows about DJ Mule is because I was the one who took the fucking torch and decided to torch that guy to the goddamn ground. The only reason that guy even got 10 seconds of attention was because I pointed out how fucking full of shit he is. No, 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 no. D you can blame me all you want, but this is fantastic. There is nothing better than when my enemy cites someone that n not only doesn't agree with them, but also is the stupidest person they could cite. Citing DJ Mule as a supportive source in your video means that you have lost. It is a, um, are you familiar with the concept of like a, of a shibboleth? Does anybody know the concept of a shibboleth? A shibboleth is like a, it's like a, it's like a custom or a principle, or it's like a, like, it's, it's like in-group knowledge, basically. It's a thing that is, um, it's a thing that, that, that like everyone in a particular group would understand. So for example, um, if you were a, uh, if you were a nineties kid, you almost certainly would understand what Pokemon is. Okay. Um, you, if, if you were a, uh, you know, if you, uh, were in America, you would understand what 9-11 never forgets, never forget means, you know? It's basically a, it's like a, yeah, it's like a public secret. It's like a public, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, uh, it's it's an in-group signifier, okay? It's a thing that that tells other people that you are at least in some way in uh, in the know on something they the the rest of them are, okay? Uh, and uh, DJ Mule, knowing that DJ Mule is a j fucking joke, is a shibboleth uh, of the online left. Everyone who isn't literally a part of DJ Mule's little clique will agree that DJ Mule is the dumbest motherfucker that has ever dared walk online. This bitch doesn't know what, she doesn't know that. So she's citing DJ Mule unironically without recognizing that it is an obvious dead giveaway that you do not know anything about the online left. You don't know anybody. You don't know anything about the history of this space. You don't understand anything. That's what that is right now. He's not representative. He's just, he's a sign of the times. If you're in the online left right now, basically every major online left content creator uh, saw or reacted to or even made content about how atrocious that video was. It was one of the most disgusting and embarrassing, dishonest examples of like how to not do a video essay. It was a gigantic, ugly hit piece that only, pr that only produced lies. And this fucking dumb centrist just used it as a positive citation. Incredible. Absolutely goddamn incredible. Conducive to politics. No way conducive to good politics. Because politics is work, especially in the work of trying to understand, of trying to put yourself into the shoes and perspective and world and traditions of another, of another oh, who oh, is complete. Also, also, it's really interesting. Um, the, the citation that she just did of DJ Mule was talking about reproductive labor in which he misquoted and completely misunderstood the concept of reproductive later, labor. She doesn't even know what he's talking about there. She just heard the word labor and she saw it from a leftist channel and she slapped it in there right next to Vosh. Hey, uh, somebody, hey, somebody, I know out, I know out in the, com uh, out in the comments right now, I know, I know out in the chat right now that there are some Voshites there. You might, you might want to let Vosh know that Kidology uh, cited Vosh right next to DJ Mule, that she used Vosh and DJ Mule together to make an argument about how the left is, uh, is, is focusing too much on trans issues. He might, you know, he might, he might be a little concerned more about this video than. <laughs> that was the one where he said reproductive labor was putting away, uh, uh, reproductive labor was not buying groceries. It was, a. Uh, 
it was putting away groceries so that they don't spoil on the counter. That was what he was talking about. Just so that we're 100% clear on that. Gayfesh, you think that she's trying to use DJ Mule as an example of a bad leftist? No, I don't think so. If we go back, if we go back, she was talking about, uh, she, she said that, uh, that, that the left wants to put labor onto everybody else. And then she used an example of DJ Mule saying that it's normal to not want to do all the labor. She's saying that DJ Mule is agreeing with her. But let's find out distinct from you and it is difficult but it is necessary in the interest of what Look, we'll i believe again. is the overarching we'll again, okay? idea let me let me under let me just explain the structure here this is lazy politics versus labor she just said just a few minutes ago that lefties do not want to do the labor of reaching out okay here we go because emotional labor is not something that we are willing to do. I can't stand people who call themselves leftists and do not understand that people do not want to do reproductive labor. Like cooking is a whole ass thing, dude. Is in no way conducive. Do, do you see? She's agreeing. She's using him as an example alongside Vosh of people who are calling out the left for not understanding that labor is supposedly hard. She is trying to point out that the left is lazy. She's trying to point out, she's using DJ Mule as a supportive, as a support, uh, as a supportive clip. ...conducive to politics. No way conducive to good politics. Because politics is work, especially in the work of trying to understand, of trying to put yourself into the shoes and perspective Politics is work, especially in the work of trying, uh, uh, especially in of the work. Of trying to understand, of trying to put yourself into the shoes and perspective and world and traditions of another, of another who is completely distinct from you. And it is difficult, but it is necessary in the interest of what I believe is. Yep, it's clock time. The clock has to get a little bit bigger. The over that was a incomprehensible run on sentence overarching idea that the left has of social progress, of social betterment. And in all this, I do appreciate and I do believe quite strongly that the left has to work a lot harder than the right, because the right ironically has a lot of things in its favour, contrary to the left. And I think we can see that when we look at these two countering trends on YouTube. Yes, hold on. Gila Monster's right. Yeah, everyone in chat is confused because the clip doesn't do what she seems to think it does. We know that because we analyzed, our community knows that because we analyzed the whole video. That's why I was saying it's like a shibboleth. She doesn't realize that DJ Mule isn't criticizing the left. He's trying to manipulate a message to shit on Xander Hall. She doesn't get it because she wasn't plugged in. She doesn't have the context because she's a fucking random centrist grifter smugly lecturing people on the left. That's why. Videos titled Why I Left the Left versus videos titled Why I Left the Right. There are far more of the former relative to the latter. In fact, <laughs> No! No! <laughs> That's because why I left the left, that's because why I left the left is an astroturf campaign. Obviously there's no why I left the right videos because the right was astroturfing. They were paying money to people. They were willing to pay people for their why I left the left story. Obviously there's going to be why, why I left the left videos by that specific title when you have a astroturf campaign by actual political op operatives. How fucking, how fucking stupid. Oh my dear God, this is gonna give me brain damage. It's got, <laughs> is that Ariel Scarcella in here? Is that what somebody said? Holy fucking shit. 
Holy shit! I could only find <laughs> one video by Hunter Avalon on why I left the right. And that video was from quite a few years ago. And since then, I have really not seen any. And I would say that there are roughly five reasons. Okay, everybody. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. This is the stupidest. Excuse me? But I couldn't help but notice that when I went on the internet and I searched anti-feminist M&Ms that I didn't come up with fucking anything. Except for from the right. The left is interestingly completely silent on the issue of the manphobic M&Ms. But the right is talking about it. Curious, isn't it? for this. I'm particularly and specifically talking about the right as we see it in, again, North America and Northern Europe. The right is very good at playing into nostalgia. And I think this is because nostalgia is largely on the side of everything that the right stands for, namely patriotism, the idea of heroes, victors, namely victors of the North America. Nostalgia? Okay, let me be 100% blunt with you. Nostalgia is the food of idiots and literal child-minded people. I'm not kidding you. Nostalgia, if you build your life around nostalgia, you spend your living waking hours pining only for the things of the past and usually for fucking consumerist garbage. Oh, I miss the old Coke. Remember when America was so good? Nostalgia is an embarrassing, it is, nostalgia is arguably a, <laughs> Nostalgia is arguably a symptom of the disease of our times because people have nothing to live for in the present and so they obsess over the things that they remember from when they were kids. Oh, don't you, you know what's going to be amazing? You know what's going to be fucking incredible is when in 50 years from now you're going to have a bunch of like old folks, like literally 80-year-old people going, "Ah, I remember. Don't you remember back in the good days when you could buy some uh when you could go to the store and buy some 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 surge don't you guys remember the tamagotchis the days used to be so good where have we gone western democracy is in decline you can't find a tamagotchi anywhere these days jesus fucking christ Americas and of Northern Europe, a past of tradition, of family values, of very clear identities and roles for individuals in society. And importantly, the past represents an idea that there was community and homogeneity, that there was trust. A lie, by the way. This is, by the way, it's funny. What she is explaining right here, positively, mind you, is the pal is the, uh, the palingenetic. It's the palingenetic uh, n nationalism is what it's called. I think is what it's called. Hold on, let me make sure I got the wording right. Yeah, the palingenic narrative or something along those lines. God damn it, I can't remember. Is that the word that I'm thinking of? Yeah, palingenetic ultra palingenetic ultra nationalism. It is the idea that there was like a, a there was like a, a former great time that we have degenerated from. That there was a time in the past. It is literally a core of fascist messaging. The idea that we have declined. That there was a time when when our bloodlines were pure. That our people were pious. That our women were beautiful and stayed in the kitchen. It is the palingenetic uh, ultra uh, the palingenetic ultra nationalism is the idea. It's like one of the core Core, core tenets of the definition of fascism. Between governments and the people, that there was trust within communities and within households. It is clear to individuals, irrespective of what side of the political spectrum you are on, that trust among communities has dwindled, that trust between the elites, between the establishment and government and the people is non-existent, and that in our modern context, nobody is particularly happy, socially speaking. Secondly, I would say that ironically, and this is very ironic, but the right has honesty. It really does. The right are very honest about being selfish.
Are you actually insane? Kidology, are you actually insane? You are talking about the party that from the office of the president pushed a completely false narrative, a narrative of complete and the completely and utterly debunked on every level about a stolen election, an election for a, a claim for which there is literally zero evidence. Every single case, even in courts that were that were that were under the for the the under the oversight of a Trump appointee judge, every single court case found zero evidence of the so-called stolen election narrative. The big lie. How, are you fucking are you for fucking real? These are the people who spread COVID misinformation. Also, let's not rem let's not forget that the uh, that the some of the biggest figures on the right are just the I mean, you guys want to talk about fucking Jerry Falwell Jr. Do you guys remember that guy, Jerry Falwell Jr., one, the leader of one of the most influential religious organizations in the world, a guy who was supposedly a Christian who, as it was as it has been uh, widely exposed, while pretending to be a Christian, while teaching people to be good Christians, was uh, was fucking hookers, was uh, was was uh, was doing drugs, was fucking doing a was a fucking alcoholic, all behind the scenes, completely lied, cheating on his wife. All of that and this guy was a Christian who would go around on lecturing tours telling people to be good Christians and vote for fucking Trump you're gonna try and tell me that the Republicans that the right has honesty on their side are you is she, I have to make the I know this isn't the same thing but the clock needs to be just a little bit bigger for this that is one of the most idiotic statements I've ever heard in my entire life a level of copium that is beyond belief about being prejudiced, about being individualistic, about not being very nice people. <laughs> they are very honest about caring. That's not true. They don't say that they're not nice people. The right constantly asserts that they're the nicest people around. Why do you think that America has this hyper-Christian, fake, uh, obscene positivity at every angle? The right is constantly telling you, the, le the left are scolds. They don't want you to be happy like we do. Have you ever listened to a right-winger ever? Or is this just endless, brainless propaganda for the right from a centrist, as always? Holy fuck. They hate being thought of as not nice. Also, you want to talk about more dishonesty? These motherfuckers lie. They make up, they made up the fucking groomer narrative. They made that up so that they could lie through a smiling face. We just want to protect children. Yeah, everybody. It's not about our pathological hatred of gay people. We just want to protect children. And then you get that Marjorie Taylor Green ass fucking smile. Holy fuck. Oh yeah, just ignore Nuts, it's okay. Nuts doesn't know what he's talking about. ...about homogeneity, about caring about the family, specifically their own family over that of everybody else's. Of the idea that it is every man for himself, every woman for herself, every- That's not what they say though. That's not what they say at all. In fact, the right constantly opines about the collective church. They constantly opine about the nation. They don't believe that it's every man for himself or every woman for herself. They only say that when it's convenient for them. They only say that when they can shirk off the responsibilities that they have. They only use that to manipulate dumb pieces of shit like you. Every family for itself. And when they are not honest, they're very good at co-opting religion in order to justify their actions and beliefs. With this, I'm talking about the more extreme tenets of the right, sort of the alt-right or the very traditionalist religious right, the ultra and orthodox right. And in this, they inevitably don't mince words. They're very upfront about what they are saying and therefore the- Have you ever talked to a Christian before? Christians say, hate the, hate, hate the sin, not the sinner when they absolutely hate the sinner and their actions show that they hate the sinner.
Christians are like the least honest people on the planet. This is just so ridiculous. This is just, this, this type of analysis can only come from someone who is completely detached from reality. If you have ever engaged with Christian fundamentalism, the idea that they are honest as they go around, as they go around telling you that God told them to specifically start a mission to go and argue uh, against evolution. You're telling me those types of people are honest? This is absurd. This is fucking absurd. This is, no one believes this. I don't know who found this video useful, but it must be, it must just be like ASMR for the indoctrinated brain. You listen to a video like this and it makes you feel better because you, you know, you hear words that you recognize in the correct basic uh, structure. Tarpalicious says, I don't think she's ever actually been outside. She has a video about how she's been an incel for over two years. That's interesting. Let's go. The message is very understandable. It's simple, it's easy, it's clean cut. And this is very interesting when it comes to something like racism. If your takeaway from this is like, oh, well look, actually they're not that at all. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. That's not what the, you're, that's not what he, that's just not what he said. He just said that the conversation was going well. He's not being yelled at. They're having opposing, opposing views, but they can talk to each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. his views are fucked up, but they can talk. That's what a civil conversation is. Doesn't defeat the fact that he's not racist or he's racist. You can have civil conversations with people who have the most abhorrent views. That's it. And you can talk to people who have views that are absolutely disgusting. Doesn't change the fact that it's a conversation. I don't understand what this, how this connects back. How does this connect back? <laughs> Wait, for real? Hold on. Oh my god, okay, we're adding this one. 85D2D Derek, sorry, we have to make a small upgrade, everybody. I apologize, everyone. We have to do a very small upgrade to the stream. Uh, applying the update right now. Hold on. Applying update. Give me just a second here. We have an upgrade. Okay, let me do this. All right, all right, all right. We're good. We're about to take this stream to the next level, okay? We're about to fucking upgrade this shit. Where is it? Here we go. We got to go here. All right, hold on. Let me get it. Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's do it! Station. And the civil one. Yes, you start this video by like, this guy's about to get hate crime for the vine. Here they are just talking kindly like, Pff. if you walk away and think that this is not the most racist, people can still look at this dude and say he's incredibly racist and they wouldn't be wrong. Yeah. Does I don't understand what this has to do with anything that we were talking about. See the fact that they were able to talk about it. Still civil. Something you've proven to be incapable of. I've heard numerous people who are like me, an ethnic minority, saying that they actually prefer or miss the days when individuals who are racist would just say, I'm racist, I don't. Yes, that's supposed to be an argument for the honesty of the right, is that they're more, they're more willing to use hate speech. Is that really a point of honesty? Is that really what honesty means? Honesty is that it, honesty is when you say racial slurs. Like you, I don't like you because you're an ethnic minority. I don't like black people. Relative to what we have today, which is very much a sort of racism that is under the radar, that is very difficult to detect or very difficult to make known. And I think this. That's called by the way, the Southern strategy, the Southern strategy, which was implemented by, by the right. The right is the one that implemented the Southern strategy. The, the right is the one that decided to start lying about their racism. You wanna know why the left doesn't have to lie about the racism? Because most of them aren't fucking deeply racist. Yes, there's certainly some racists on the left, no doubt. There are certainly some people who are, who have, who bear prejudices. But the right has a literal entire official party strategy by which they lie and obfuscate their racism. And here you are trying to say, oh yeah, the right is super honest. 
This is one of the dumbest arguments. I, again, this is this is a DJ Mule t tier video. Every single section of this has been fractally incorrect. Everything from manipulative editing, everything to literally lying to our face by putting up a uh, putting up a, a source and then saying that it says something other than what it says. Everything from just soup god awful arguments to literally unintelligible lines, lines that are not written in a way that makes any sense. This is where on the left, at least, we have a fake allyship. We have an idea which I'm going to talk about shortly, which is about representing abstract people as opposed to representing people. And I think for a lot of people, especially myself, I find that when somebody is upfront about being racist, particularly in my country of origin, South Africa, it was actually kind of refreshing because I knew what was going on. I knew who liked me, who didn't like me. Whereas I find that in the UK, at least, especially among leftist or liberal leaning circles, I'm quite paranoid or more paranoid than I would otherwise be if things were just honest and clear. So you're complaining that the left isn't racist enough to you? Is, is that that's the argument that's me. I know what she's trying to say. I know she's trying here to make the argument that she feels like there is still racism on the left. But the argument that she's actually saying is that she wishes that that more lefties would be racist to her, which uh, sorry, but I can't deliver on that for you. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. Sorry that too many of us are not actually racist for your liking. Yeah, also, uh, people are noting in chat that she said we when referring to the left, but she has explicitly stated that she's not a leftist. And we all know she's not a leftist because she doesn't know anything that we're talking about, anything that's relevant in any of these spaces. This is just somebody who's looking for a quick fucking cash grab to make the right angry so that they nod along. You go, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Look, even the centrists agree with this. Uh -huh. I, can't. I believe that when someone's like, I, I hate you, it feels more real than this okay maybe it's i can understand that you know Ooh. i can understand that i can understand that that that's black you. that you that's me i can understand that where black people has been in the the the, the world that i can understand that i can understand people hating me and i'm like okay that's fair i i understand i can avoid that i always said this i always knew where i stand with like folks who are on that end of the spectrum so if they say i hate you i'm like cool I, i'm kind of used to that like I, I know where you stand it's always been the people closer to me politically that always made me feel a little uneasy and that's what this reminded me of oh yes yes black people were here so mm, i don't think so bitch i don't think so white liberals and shit. i don't think so i don't believe you something about how quickly you locked the doors when i was walking by your car yeah something about it just didn't feel right yeah this is the same maybe i'm wrong but it's that's what this reminds me of. And so in a weird sort of way, the right... I love that the citation is just other people that she seems to like that say something somewhat similar to what she's saying. Like, there's nothing... This citation doesn't, like, present even, like, an experience. It's just two guys sort of riffing with each other and doing a, a bit about maybe some anecdotes. It's like, but that's her citations. These are her citations honesty and frankness about where they stand is actually quite refreshing. <laughs> Please do not misconstrue this as me saying that I condone or in any way support the racism of some factions of the far or alt-right. I most definitely do not in any way. I am just purely speaking from how I personally and how I have heard individuals from my sort of identity perspective responding to that relative to um, well, I can't speak to your identity perspective. Maybe, maybe they do believe the right is more honest because some of the right will use racial slurs. I don't imagine that many people would come to that conclusion. I think the conclusion that most of them would come to is that the right is more racist. To responding to a different kind of racism that is quite prevalent, I would say, among, I would argue more so to be leftist spheres of life. People with good intentions, people who speak on behalf of minorities, etc. Controversial opinion, but if you have a token white and you're hanging out with your friend group of color, 
you need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. Like, don't just bring them. Ask for explicit permission from everyone. Because just because you're comfortable with them doesn't mean that everybody's comfortable with them. I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's, that's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. Like, don't, don't let them think they're a good white person. Don't, don't give them that card to use against other people. Please don't do that. Wow, what a strange TikToker. I don't know what the point of that clip was, but wow, what a strange TikToker. What a strange TikToker with a very weird and, and uh, socially inept message to say. Incredible. Wow, a TikToker having a, a incomprehensibly stupid take? Wow, who could have thought of that? I think another thing which the right has in its favor, especially today, is that it accepts whiteness as an identity, as it is. That is, white. It's about to get really bullshit. It's about to get really fucking bullshit in here. I know, I just know, I just know it's about to get really fucking weird in here. There we go. Uh -oh. Individuals who are on the right are not told that they must feel guilty. They are not told about their privilege. They are not told to check themselves or that they have all the power. They are not told to stop saying racial slurs. They are not told to stop attempting to join the KKK. The right just has all of these advantages, you know? They just, they just really, they accept whiteness as it is. They give you a clan hood themselves. They, they, their wife made that. They had their wife made you that clan hood. Are you fucking, what? Obviously, the right is more accepting towards fucking racial, white, white, racial identity and white supremacy. That's their shit. Of course they are. What? Their identity as a white individual who may be patriotic, who may be family and traditionally oriented, who may be heterosexual and happy in kind of very clearly defined gender roles is seen as a good and a they actively discourage anyone who is different than that. No one on the fucking planet is saying that you're wrong for, for being your gender. No one is saying that you're wrong for being a member of a family. The right won't let you live any other way. They only accept that. Are you... Oh my god, I'm gonna melt. My brain is melting. Thing. My brain and is I fucking think melting. especially for the large cohort of individuals whom the contemporary left in North America and in Northern Europe has neglected, namely the white working class, definitely find an identity and allegiance. Contemporary left in North America. Oh, sorry is seen as a good and acceptable thing. And I think especially for the large cohort of individuals whom the contemporary left in North America and in Northern Europe has neglected, namely the white working class, definitely... F I'm sorry. Okay, hold on a second. This fucking content creator, Kidology, at the beginning of this video, said that she, in she included neoliberals and and uh and and liberals in general as a part of the left the only working class people that the left and that neoliberals give a shit about is white working class people all they talk about is the poor rust belt what about the 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 rust belt again Fantasy world. She lives in a fantasy world in which all of the facts are in all of the actual things that are verifiably true about the world about Joe Biden campaigning on the white working class about Hillary fucking Clinton pandering to the white working class about literally every single politician pandering to the white working class to the exclusion of fucking anybody else. Is this absurd? Is this just I mean, uh, uh. I just answered my own question, fuck it. Find an identity and allegiance in that with the right.
And I think another thing that the right really has in its favour, at least in, again, I keep repeating, I'm speaking specifically about North America and Northern Europe, is that the right is very accepting of a diverse membership. And this is, again, truly ironic. <laughs> when we look at the political spectrum and we look at that Is she going to talk about the Lincoln Log Republicans? Is she going to talk about the five guys, the five black guys that Donald Trump gave t-shirts to uh, and, and paid them to stand in the front of all of his rallies, the, the black people for Trump? Yep, here we go. Segment. NPC, NPC moment, NPC moment incoming. Which is designated to the right from the center right to the ultra orthodox right. There is a lot going on and there is a lot of space for a lot of different identities. You can be conservative in values without being religious. You can be a conservative atheist. You can be a conservative. For now. And that is not true, by the way. If you actually listen to the content created by religious right-wingers, they do not speak. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, everybody. We just did this the other day. Do you guys remember the video that we watched from Spencer Smith about Kanye West and Nick Fuentes? Do you remember the part where he, he got mad at them and said that he can't support uh, either of them because they were Catholics? And then he said he really doesn't like Milo Yiannopoulos because he's a gay Catholic? Do you remember that? That's like about the, that is about the, uh, the most representative example that you can get of the sort of like salt of the earth Republican co uh, content creator. Like Spencer Smith is like some random pastor who, who has managed to create a 100k YouTube channel and he talks about how much he fucking hates Catholics all the time. Ben Shapiro constantly goes on rant, rants about atheists. Fucking, fucking even, do you guys remember when, do you guys remember when fucking Dave Rubin converted to Christianity because he felt like, uh, like, because it's very obvious that he kept getting shit about being an atheist? This is just crock. What a absolute crock of shit. In so far as absolute how you crock of your shit. Finance. Not realistic, not true. The, the right wing movement in America is predominantly e evangelical and the evangelicals can't fucking stand the Catholics. They'll put aside their differences for exactly one minute when they all go to vote for Trump and then they're plotting to kill the other group all the time. Literally purge them. Do you guys, a simple look into the history of how Catholics were treated in the United States will tell you everything you need to know about what the evangelicals have in plans for the Catholics. I'm not fucking kidding you. Evangelicals, I grew up in about the most fundamentalist evangelical group that you can imagine and they fucking despised Catholics. They believed unironically that Catholics were not gonna go to heaven. This is just, this is just, this is a demented video. ...and your personal life whilst being socially quite liberal. You can celebrate Christmas with your family, believe in the traditional family unit, be patriotic, whilst also being completely anti-establishment. There are vigilantes, there are libertarians, there is a whole a whole situation going on there and it is truly diverse and fascinating just from a political and theoretical on the hey guys everybody you want to know it's really great the right has such a great collection of people on it you've got the catholic pedophiles you've got the southern baptist convention pedophiles you've got the libertarian free market pedophiles you've got the matt gates uh, maga republican pedophiles we got them all everybody it's fantastic and guess what they all agree on child marriage can you believe that theoretical perspective. But it also means that there's a lot of space for a lot of identities. And I think because the right and conservative thinking is very much about the family and tradition and also every individual for themselves, I think it works weirdly. And the right is a very mixed bag of identities of individuals who are working class. Why would you show this guy why would you show this guy and Jordan Peterson when you say working class? This guy is a hell, a, is a literal, a, a quack 
a fucking miracle cure huckster. We've seen this guy's videos. He His videos are full of his own homebrew miracle cures for cancer, his homebrew miracle cures for spinal pain, and then fucking Jordan Peterson, who is like the ivory tower of ivory towers, like one of the like, fucking loaded. He's not a working class guy. He's never worked an hourly job. That guy hasn't been salaried since he was fucking 25 years old. Hasn't been anything but salaried since he was 25 years old. What are you talking about? The conservatives have exactly one trans person that is allowed to speak, and it's Blair White. And all of Blair White's videos are about insulting uh, other trans people. They allow fucking two black people to speak. Are you... Like, this is just, again, just complete alternate reality. The right does not have a diverse front. There is no evidence for that. It flies in the face of it. You guys want to go look at a picture from CPAC? You're going to see 100% straight white faces, and then you're going to see one guy who's Greek that every, that every single Republican gives the side eye to because they can't tell if he's mixed race or not. That's the Republican's idea of diversity to the ultra rich. And this is truly exceptional and very interesting to see, especially in our day and age. And I think adding on to this, another reason why the right is at an advantage relative to the left today, I would say, is because of populism. Il punto è che io credo in una società nella quale ad ogni scelta che fai corrispondono delle conseguenze e te ne assumi la responsabilità. Io rifiuto una società nella quale ogni desiderio diventa un diritto, ogni capriccio diventa un diritto, nella quale non ho responsabilità, ho solo diritti. Lo rifiuto, è sbagliato. Right-wing populism continually and repeatedly outperforms left-wing populism. When you definitely give a shit about the left doing better, and so you just use an example of a literal fascist giving in an absolutely insane Hitler-esque speech, and you're like, yeah, look, the right is doing such a good job. You should detest that. But of course, I don't have any faith in your uh, analytic capabilities. Them in North America and in Northern Europe. That is within the most advanced modern societies. And I think this has a lot to do with our history of neoliberalism relative to that of, say, Latin America or Southern Europe. Right-wing populists overwhelmingly reject neoliberal economic principles and overwhelmingly... They don't. No, they fucking don't. That is such a baby-brained analysis. They don't do that. All, every single right-wing populist figure is a fucking factory owner or an heir. None of them do. Donald Trump is, Donald Trump is the right-wing populist of America. Donald Trump was the heir of a mega, of a fucking mega fortune, of a real estate landlord mega fortune. Donald Trump was as close to an American fucking prince as you can get. He inherited a fuckload of land and used it to his advantage. You don't know what you're talking about. You are full of shit. Every single motherfucking claim in this goddamn video has been fucking fraudulent to its core. Every single leader of these stupid fucking movements are a bunch of fucking uh, uh, a corporation owning freaks. They don't reject neoliberalism. They reject the word neoliberalism because they have an allergic reaction to the word liberal. Reject the establishment and elites. They don't reject the establishment and they don't reject the elites. When they say elites, they mean Jewish people. That's what they're doing. They're hiding their JQ. It's fucked up. Why would you ever provide cover for this if you're a so-called centrist? Dishonest and stupid. Yet on the other hand, they overwhelmingly, as I've described, embrace right-wing social trends and principles of homogeneity, of anti-immigration, of the family, of tradition, nostalgia. And this most definitely, I think, contributes to the diversity of the right. Contrary to what, on the other hand, is, relatively speaking, the lack of diversity on the left. Because on the left, you... Fucking unbelievable. I need to make it larger. The clock must spin larger. 
can't be a progressive whilst also simultaneously critiquing the left. You are not deemed a proper leftist if you are, for instance, pro-capitalism, but anti neo Obviously! What? What do you think leftism means? Leftism isn't just your your fucking your fucking clock. It's not just your your d d fucked up spatial awareness clock. The left is the whole thing of the left is that is 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 almost to its core a a, a rejection of capitalism. The left wing movement, the modern left wing movement, although yes, it did start against monarchy in its absolute core. The the modern left movement almost all stems from some version of Marxism, all of it. Of course, of course, if you don't reject capitalism, people are not going to take you seriously as a leftist. Of course, that's like saying, that's like saying, what? You, you won't accept me as a leftist just because I'm a Nazi? It's fucking stupid. Liberalism. You can't be considered a leftist if you are gay, if you are a lesbian, but you are also living a very conservative kind of life or vote for a conservative candidate. You can't be considered a leftist if you're gay, but you're a conservative. What? Am I, am I, am I, am I the one? Somebody, quick, somebody let me draw a clock. I think, I think I'm start, I'm beginning to suspect that perhaps I am the one who's going insane. Maybe there is nobody called, called Kidology. Maybe I invented Kidology. Is this real? Somebody help me. Help! There is far more rigid criteria in place for why and how you can be a leftist relative to that of being on the right. And this increasingly is something that is in the favor of the right relative to the modern left. And I think in this, the left is also not as appreciative of the multifaceted and diverse nature of the right because traditionally being on the right was very simply defined it was a very simple label but I think increasingly as modernity hits the right things have inevitably changed our social world has changed religion doesn't hold as key a position in society conventional identities are no longer just accepted as the standard and the reason why, by the way, that religion doesn't have as much of a key influence in society is because over the course of time, uh, people with the sm anyone with the smallest grasp of liberation has fought tooth and nail against the primacy of the church because the primacy of the church led us into thousand a thousand year fucking dark age in which nothing could proceed because the church believed that science and knowledge was was fucking antithetical to existence that's why the church isn't as key but you might notice that there are a whole bunch of people on the right who unironically identify as fucking theocrats christian dominionist christian Christian nationalists. These people want to bring that back. Are you? No, I can't do this. Let's continue, please, God. Many oh on God. the right are appreciative of this, but ultimately still remain conservative, even if it is conservative with a small c. So with that in mind, I would like in the next part of this video to speak about some of the things I've noticed, particularly with the online left and online left-leaning video essayists and debaters. And these are things which I notice, which I think undermine the left and undermine the appeal of the left to a broader night, audience that I think ultimately the left is a trying to attract, but is I think failing to because of a lot of the things which I have said above, especially about why I think people are leaving the left. The online left is very- Evidence, please. Please show that the le people are leaving the left. Let's see it. Let's see the actual evidence besides you just doing a YouTube search for why I left the left, which is a popular fucking AstroTurf campaign. Please, let's see some evidence. Very interesting. I don't think that they have a lot of power now, but I think increasingly as generations to come are socialized more and more so by the internet and online relative to by their families, their parents, their teachers and peers, we are going to see 
online leftists and the online left gaining more clout and more influence over an audience. And so I think it's important to talk about these things and to... So wait, the le hold on, I'm sorry. ...by their families, their parents, their teachers and peers. We are going to see online leftists and the online left gaining more clout and more influence over... An so the left is shrinking, but the left is also growing. How curious. Looks like that clock needs to grow a little bit bigger. Sorry, I need to apply something to this clock real quick. Hold on, everybody. Uh, we won't be able to continue this unless... There we go, everybody. Let's continue, everyone. Let's continue. Audience. And so I think it's important to talk about these things and to reckon with these things rather than just going along with them. Because I think critique is important for anybody and for everybody in order to engage in discourse and in order to grow or to evolve. <laughs> I would say the first thing that I've noticed about the online left is that it is incredibly, incredibly cliquey. Today we are going to be talking about the creepy Balenciaga photo shoot you may have heard of, how I helped accidentally kick off Balenciaga gate, the bizarre defenses of the photo shoot, and how- <gasps> Bazinga. Hey, what the heck's going on here? Why'd my... Hmm. Why'd my audio stop? About this is that there this tweet came from a YouTuber. I accidentally hit my mute button. Here we go, everybody. Here we go. Incredibly, incredibly cliquey. Today we are going to be talking about the creepy Balenciaga photo shoot you may have heard of. How I helped accidentally kick off Balenciaga Gate, the bizarre defenses of Thank the you, photo Apollyon. shoot, Thank and you. how I lost friends over it. No, I'm not joking. The worst part about this is that this tweet came from a YouTuber who I've been friends with for years. Why is this person who I thought was my friend doing this unhinged stretch Armstrong reach to imply I am responsible for the murder of LGBT people? This isn't how you would treat a friend. This isn't criticism. This isn't a joke. This is disgusting. Maybe now, for those of you who don't know, although I'm sure everyone here has already heard about it, this is what we like to call a big fat fucking lie from, from Shoe on Head. Shoe on Head, uh, not only completely mischaracterizing what was said by Xander Hall, but also completely mischaracterizing the entire circumstance. Shoe on Head was reached out to by multiple people about the fact that she was propagating a fucking goddamn deranged, uh, lie-filled conspiracy theory with no evidence and that it was directly leading to people in her comments and not just people in her comments I'm, I'm talking mutuals of hers to literally say that gay people need to be killed and you know what's funny I did an entire goddamn video on it and you want to know who else did a goddamn video on it Vosh and you want to know who else did a goddamn video on it Xander Hall in fact we've all debunked the shit out of her stupid bullshit this video was a goddamn lie and if you don't believe me please just search my name with with shoe on head and feel free to to pick any of them and you will discover how deeply this fucking statement was a lie. But you know what I love? Name a better combination than centrists and conveniently believing the first thing that they see on the internet that agrees with them without ever doing any uh, investigation. I bet this stupid fuck doesn't even know who Shoe on Head is talking about here. But once again, what do I expect from fucking clock lady? Maybe this is karma, because I've dropped friends over politics before. Because honestly, I can't find any other explanation for this. In this day and age, I would say that the alt-right clique, which we see online, doesn't really have to do much in appealing to new followers. And this is largely because they're... You don't think that Nick Fuentes constantly trying to go on popular people's shows and actively recruit more people to the far right doesn't have anything to do with new followers? All right, clock gets a little bigger. Clock has to get a little bigger.
is, as I said, so much infighting among the left. And because the online left is very extreme in its opinions and is often then seen or caricatured as representing the entirety of the left. And it's very. It's really funny that she says in the same sentence as the alt right that the online left is seen as extreme in their opinions. Wasn't she just talking about how she is she appreciates that the alt left that the alt right will will use racial slurs and just be openly racist? Don't you think that it's a bit weird to say that the left the online left is extreme when you were just talking about how you appreciate that fact about that that particular fact about the online alt right? What this entire video is, is just a gigantic mess. A delusional, uh, a completely inconsistent, none of the thoughts act actually link together. It is just word salad brain soup. It's very easy to do this when there is, as I said, so much infighting and when the left really doesn't have a homogenous or very clear cut identity relative to the right, even she is in cross all about its multifaceted glory. So the cliqueiness of the online left is not actually to its advantage. In fact, I think it just feeds into a lot of the infighting that we see in the generic left in North America and in Northern Europe. Because I think what is interesting is that when we look at- Oh yeah, you know, the right doesn't have any clicks. The right doesn't have any cliques. The right only has one faction. Uh, there's no alt, there's no alt-right, there's no alt-light, there's no groipers, there's definitely no NRX people, no neo-reactionaries, you don't got any Nazbols over there, no, you don't got those, you don't got the Jackson Hinkle types, well, I already said Nazbols, so sorry about that, I don't want to repeat myself twice, you don't got the Catholics, you don't got the Evangelicals, you definitely, definitely don't have the Lincoln Log Republicans, the Black Republicans, the Black Republicans for Christ, the Lincoln Log Republicans for Christ, the Republican New True Republican Party for Trump, you definitely don't have the rhinos and the magas you definitely don't have the ultra magas yeah none of those things exist there's they're all just one big happy family everybody at alt-right cliques such as that of ben oh Shapiro. yeah sorry how could i forget the neocons the paleocons the freedom caucus QAnon and Jordan Peterson, Candace Owens, Matt Walsh, etc. Their allegiance is very much a political one. They are political. Yes, exactly. As AKA large number in chat says, wasn't Shu the one who was being clicky because she refused to accept any criticism from her friend, Shu, uh, friend group based on her involvement in that click? Yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? It's super interesting that if you even think about the things that are on the screen for one second, they just dissolve like fucking, fucking aging paint collaborators they are trying to politically influence and to make money they are trying to spread a particular social political all the people pictured there all work for the sh for the same show or economic message they are in allegiance because there is some kind of self-interest, some kind of overall interest for them and for the brand that is, say, the Daily Wire. With the this online so left, however, stupid. their allegiance and their collaboration is not one that is sort of of a higher purpose. It's about friendship. People who collaborate on YouTube on the left are friends. And a lot of their collaboration is based on their friendship. All the drama surrounding that friendship is based on personal things that then get exposed in DMs, in conversations that they have together. It's all very much based on friendship. Hey, don't you guys remember? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm remembering something. I'm remembering something. Hold on a second. I'm remembering something. Remember, um, remember when Milo Yiannopoulos was going around leaking the DMs of every other person, including basically every major right wing figure? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, remember when Alex Jones was like, uh, everybody was turning on Alex Jones because he had Kanye on and Kanye did some Nazi shit, except for the actual, the actual right wing, like rank and file, and all those people were like super good for it. Remember when, uh, you guys remember when like there was all that beef with Tim Pool and all those people started calling Tim Pool an idiot and turning on him immediately because he didn't do exactly what they wanted at any given moment because he didn't uh, roll over for Nick for Nick Fuentes and Kanye West. You guys remember that shit? Nah, I must have been making that all up, right? They don't never do this shit. They never, nobody ever does this. Guys, let me just be really clear about something, okay? 
Clicks are always going to exist. Humans make friends. Humans have affinity for their friends. There will always be clicks and friend groups. Yes, extreme forms of clickiness is not good, but humans make friends generally. This is always going to be true about every single movement. But you wanna know what's interesting? On the left, Friends are a little more willing to fight. And the reason why they're a little more willing to fight is because we're not all fighting for the divine right of God, which will determine uh, who gets to purge who. Of course, conservatives fall in line when the big dog barks. Of course they do. They are hierarchalists. And guess what? They quibble all the rest of the time. Every single day, they are shitting on each other. They are trying to cut each other's throats. And then when the big dog barks, they go, okay, we need to do this for God. And then we'll get those dirty Catholics. That's what they do every single fucking time. And guess what? It doesn't produce a good world, okay? Their, their way of doing things doesn't produce a good world. It produces a world of perpetual murder and purging. It sucks. They had to do, no, it was 18, wasn't it? They had to do fucking 18 votes to confirm the Speaker of the House. That hasn't happened to Democrats. That hasn't happened to the left. Stupid. Stupid. Friendships ending or being created. And I think with anything that involves friendship, it's very hard, at least contemporarily, to go against your friends or to- Did she make this? Did she make this? Danny Gonzalez is not a leftist content. This is so nonsense. Sorry, the, 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 the fucking thing has to be bigger. We have to make the clock even larger. Who are these people? We got FD Signifier, T1J, I recognize them. Fab Socialism, Tara Mookney, there's a Noah Sampson, Alice Capel, Ro Ramden. Okay, Ro Ramden is a local creator who occasionally does politics but mostly does comedy. Mr. Beard, Jarvis Johnson, Anna Marie Forcino, Sam, what, what is this? Is got Danny Gonzalez a leftist? Danny Gonzalez is a goofball comedy poster. Is he a leftist? Who's Chad Chad? The, the footnote says, online streamers have their own friendships and foes. It was too complicated for me to follow. I don't watch streams that much. However, friendships and fighting typically revolves around Hassan, Vosh, Shuanhead, and Xander Hall as of late. So, I'm sorry, uh, let me just be clear about this. I don't, I, this was too complicated for me to follow. Yes. Why didn't you just put that at the beginning? All of this was too complicated for you to follow. You should not have made a video on it. To critique and criticize your friends. There is no room, space, or time for a critique of ideas and positions when there is only really time for friendship. There's no potential for ideas to evolve, to be rectified, to be... Oh yeah, by the way, this is the bankrupt nature. By the This is the emotional bankruptcy of... Bankruptcy of, of centrism. This is where you get at the same time as saying well, you know The left the left just won't accept anybody and then at the same time in the same fucking video Arguing that the left ha has has no time for ideas because they're too busy making friends Which one is it is the left incapable of making friends or are they all friends to the degree that they can't think about anything? The bankruptcy of the right, the bankruptcy of the centrist, is that they don't even realize the value of friendship. They don't even know what it is. This fucking incel, this self-admitted fucking incel who hasn't gone outside in 10 years or whatever her stupid claim is, probably doesn't even know what it means to have a friend. Yeah, this is straight up. It's, I'm sorry, I gotta play this real quick. It's literally this. Me, dude. Those guys are sharp as nails up there. You can't put anything past them. Oh my god, dude, I'm freaking out. I am so stressed out. I feel like I'm having a panic attack. You wanna talk about stress? You wanna talk about stress? Okay? I've stumbled onto a major company conspiracy, Mac. How about that for stress? There you go. There you go. Straight up. Discussed to be rediscussed. When I watch left leaning YouTubers who collaborate with each other, it's all laughing, it's all fun, it's all laughing at the other side, at something stupid that the right has done, etc. There's hardly any real hard hitting discussions about ideas on the left, about my sources that I made it the fuck up.
Bro, tune into one of my fucking call-in streams, you dumb idiot. Not just that, tune into any of the debate panels that have ever gone on. Tune into fucking anything. What about the times that lefties come together to raise fucking thousands of dollars to help a comrade, huh? How about that, you fucking idiot? You're a clown. You don't know anything that you're talking about. This is low tier fucking propaganda and nobody but your fucking hog like followers are going to eat up this slop. This is pathetic and you should be ashamed of yourself. Macro economics about yeah, she literally just admitted on that last image that she does. She can't pay attention to streamers because they're too complicated. How stupid can you be? One of the things that I love most about fucking right wing centrist types is that they absolutely love um, They absolutely fucking love to treat their audience like the stupidest motherfuckers I will say that in on I guess maybe just like she said earlier about racists being refreshing to her I will say that it is very refreshing to see how with with what disdain Right wing and centrist creators treat their audience. They really do think that their audience are pigs They don't believe that they can think they think that they can just write a footnote and that'll just paper over any fucking critical thought going on Maybe sometimes they're right. Maybe conservatives just really are that dumb But I like to think that a lot of them get tired of it a lot of them see that they that the, the, the absolute hatred and disdain that these people give to them Macro politics about the world and society and the place of the left within it. What can be done about the current state of the world, the current situation that we find ourselves in? The clique serves nobody but the individuals involved when it comes to the left. Relative to the ultra-right clique, the most notable- Name one. Name one click. Accurately, accurately outline one click. Do it one of the Daily Wire. It is a clique that has significance, that goes way beyond its members. Groypers, alt-right, evangelists, uh, fundamentalists, paleocons, Lincoln Log Republicans, uh, Blacks for Trump, um, uh, uh, let's name another one. Uh, did I say Groypers already? Uh, NRX, uh, 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 the, the um, Tea Party movement. Uh, let's see, uh, who else can I name? Um, we already said, they already said the Daily Wire. Uh, and then there is the Alex Jones Infowars click. There's like a hundred of them. TERFs, America First, uh, fucking LGB Alliance. There's like a hundred thousand of them. The NRA, the Hoteps, QAnoners, Nixium. If you replaced any one of them with somebody else, the clique would still be there. It would still hold because it has an overarching purpose. You could replace Ben Shapiro with any My Tom, Dick, or Harry, it doesn't no matter. Fun, uh, Candace Owens could be booted out and they could get another Candace. It would be fine. Are you aiming for that spot? Is that the spot you're aiming for? Fine. It would still exist. The same cannot be said for the left. Now, this relates directly to what I said about political dogma and also about the convenience of, I think, lazy argumentation that the left is particularly susceptible to. Now, when I say this, I'm in no way saying that contrary to the right, the left is lazy. Oh, no, not at all. I think that it's just that what I said about the left having potential, particularly insofar as historically, the left has rarely been all about labor. And I don't mean labor as and the political sense or the political word and connotation of labor. I mean, true labor. The left Clock has is worked getting bigger. throughout Clock history is getting bizarre, hard bigger. and brutally. And it has produced the most exceptional things, the most exceptional inventions, the most exceptional structures, architecture, things that we take for granted in the world are down to just the common man and woman laboring. And so I'm in no way saying that the right isn't lazy. I just think that ironically, a lot more things are to the right's advantage and that that is just an example of how particular politics is just that. It's politics, it's contradictory, it's unfair and we have to accept it and work with Good it and go on. with it. And I think that this particular issue is one in which the left really... Chalk Homo Sapien asks, what does the clock meme refer to? Uh, having someone draw a clock is often is a is a a uh, low level diagnostic tool used by uh, doctors to tell if somebody has 
particular types of dementia. Uh, it is often common with things like encephalitis, dementia, even Alzheimer's, uh, that uh, your brain's ability to, uh, to it's called, um, it's called spatial neglect is what it's called. You you stop being able to actually uh, process mentally where things are supposed to be in relation to each other. So when people draw the clock, they often look just like this one. Now this one is, is directly a reference to a scene uh, talking about this exact specific thing in the pop TV show Hannibal. Uh, that's where this clock, this specific clock comes from. But um, that it's generally a reference to the mind melting uh, situation that we all find ourselves in. And the clock grows bigger, the more insane that this video gets. There you go. Let's continue does not fare well in and increasingly will not. The left used to be on the side of the working class, specifically the white working class. Something pivotal happened The left, the left being on the side of the white working class, by the way, is what killed the leftist labor movements in America. Leftist labor movements were completely incapable of grappling with the disgusting racism, and that was used to undermine almost every labor movement in America. You do not know labor history. Don't fucking talk about labor history. This is so uneducated, it's unbelievable. In the 1980s, I think a lot of Nuts says, okay, I hate this framing. She's just, she's literally just saying that the left needs to care more about white people. Yes, this is what centrists do. Centrists are always, they are always un end up just being propagandists for the right. They always do. Because to be a centrist, you have to be a complete and utter dupe. And so the truth is that most centrists are just dishonest. They take the centrist position because they believe they can recruit, they can act as basically a pipeline to pull people to the far right. They can lie to your face while being a centrist and appealing to you emotionally. Things that we can reference back to really stems from the 1980s, from the governments of Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. But in short, the left didn't put up any opposition and ultimately actually just accepted and consolidated the neoliberal policies and initiatives. What? No, they didn't. Margaret Thatcher crushed unions. Margaret Thatcher used the military to crush unions. They were crushed. The left was crushed and liberals stood by and looked the other way. The reason why neoliberalism won is because neoliberals looked the other way while Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan completely demolished labor rights. Ronald Reagan pushed through reforms that have made it impossible to restructure any sort of labor movement in the United States. Margaret Thatcher aggressively and militarily crushed strikes. This is so wrong. This is this is this is like the point of the video where it's not just a matter of opinion. This is factually incorrect. Just factually on every single level completely wrong, verifiably incorrect. Negatives of the Thatcher and Reagan governments. We have seen the rise of the new left or new labor in the UK and very much a sort of new rebranding of the left. But it is a rebranding that is very ambiguous and very much lacking in identity, something I will get to shortly. But I think in this, as I said, the left seems to be drawn to micro issues as opposed to macro issues. And I think the most obvious micro issue that the left is very, very much drawn to, especially younger members of the left, is transgender Brands rights. Trans people! And transgender Who could have seen that coming? Who could have seen that the lady who spent the entire first third of the video hardcore dick sucking all of the turfs was gonna bring up that trans people are the problem? Oh, oh, I'm fucking sorry. I'm sorry that I'm in your way, you fucking ghoul. issues. And I think in this, the left has very much a left or just a ban.
No, never mind. I don't care. Not worth my time. Let's go. And the white working class who tend to be very traditionalist, who tend to be patriotic, who tend to have lower levels of education than the, I would say, the new left perspective and new leftists who have had their identity since the 1980s virtually ripped from them after the demise of trade unions and unionism, of manual labour, of communities very much based in the working class ethic, in the labour ethic. And the same... Sorry, one other thing. How the fuck are you supposed to have a labour movement when we don't even have a, a traditional labour market anymore? You can't have a labor movement that looks exactly the same as the past when people don't work in those types of industries anymore. The gig economy is in, is growing more and more and has been for fucking years. The labor market does not look anything like it did in the 19 fucking 80s. Of course that movement disappeared. Not only was it crushed into the ground by some of the dirtiest political moves you can imagine, but also the world isn't the same. The modern la labor movement is not going to look the same. Fucking everybody does their job remotely now. Nobody shares a workplace with anybody else, or at least a lot of people don't anymore. Yeah, these modern leftists... Huh, all these modern leftists... Where's the... What happened to the piano tuners union? Maybe, maybe not many people own grand pianos anymore. Maybe the profession of piano tuning is not exactly as big or as popular as it used to be because the only people who have like a fucking piano that needs to be tuned is like a school or a fucking rich person. And so, yeah. Can most definitely be said for, I would say- Yeah, what happened to the, what happened to the horseshoe makers union? What? then the left has completely failed. They should have rallied the power of the Horseshoe Makers Union. They, the North America, specifically the US. Where in the world is this possible? Because I would like to go there and contribute. Well, shit fire and save matches. Somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. Seems like she's wanting to go back to the 1700s where everybody was just mean to everybody else. Honey, if you want to go somewhere where you want to contribute to that little factor, why don't you come on down to the South? You know, I mean, because apparently we're racist towards everybody, and we don't, we don't pop nobody for being racist towards anybody else. That's a myth. You know, you'd be safe, you'd be fine. I'm sure you'd make it down down the block. But that's besides the point. I mean, if you want to come down here and try it, you're more than welcome. And so, as the left pre why is this clip in here? Why is it, why is it a race, why is this clip of, of a, of a random TikTok lady being weirdly inflammatory and racist towards white people, I guess, ra racist, discriminatory towards white people? Uh, it, why is this, and then, and then a random Southern lady saying, you should come down here and try that, implying because you'll get killed. Why is this in this video? Why? Why? occupies itself with micro issues, we have a bit of a, a conundrum. And the conundrum is that the modern left does not seem willing or wanting to in any way engage with trying to understand the perspective of those whom the left has now left behind since the 1980s. Nor does it seem willing to appreciate that the majority of people in the world are far more concerned with macro issues when we are talking about politics or with no, they're fucking not. The majority of people are not concerned with fucking macro issues. What are you fucking talking about? What is the, what does any of this mean? This is all completely vague, meaningless shit. Who are the people who are being left behind? The shoemakers union? What are you talking about? Unions, there are still a couple of unions that are going strong in America. Those are doing just fine. They're well connected along the, among the left. And secondly, what macro issues are you talking about? Do you think that the macro issue of the, the uh, invasion of the Southern border, a completely made up thing is like a, you think that's a macro issue? You think that's a fucking macro issue? You think that conservatives obsessing over trans people is a ma is like a, a macro issue, but for some reason the left responding to it is a micro issue? What are you fucking talking about? Absolutely full of shit.
with their own individual <sighs> issues. I know, everybody keeps telling me to stop expecting this to make sense, but I have to, right? I have to keep trying because we've, we've invested this far, right? Right? Maybe I should just copy more of these. Uh, maybe I should just copy paste more clocks and we should just fill the screen with clocks and I can run out the, the play time of this. It's not my fault that this person made a video that is so full of lies that it fucking rivals DJ Mule. I'm baking a second clock. We have two clocks now. Let's go. Namely that of their families. And the left, rather than trying to understand this, trying to engage with this particular demographic, which it has historically now left behind, instead tends to just label these individuals as racists, as bigots, as transphobes, as all of these sort of phobias, which is why I say that the left has this issue of calling everyone, everywhere, anywhere, some kind of phobia, some kind of issue. And in that, not having to deal with that issue, not having so, so it's a phobia or some kind of issue. Do you understand how nonsensical that is? That doesn't even, again, Clocks are getting bigger. Clocks are getting bigger. Nonsense, nonsense detected. Clocks getting larger. I'm going to do the labor to try and understand where somebody or some groups are coming from. Hello, editing me once again. Since the arrest of Andrew Tate, I have been thinking about this quite thoroughly. On Twitter and on YouTube, it is very apparent that the left doesn't know how to talk about masculinity, nor to give masculinity a positive voice. And I think this not knowing how to talk about masculinity stems from the fear, the very modern fear of masculinity among the left, particularly stemming from feminism and feminist rhetoric. And don't come after me, I am a feminist. But there are very important things to consider when it comes to feminism and it comes to the online left fixation with, as I said, micro issues such as those that I have referenced or reducing everything to systematic micro issues. You have mentioned exactly one micro issue this entire time, one micro issue, and it's trans people. We get it. You don't like trans people. We get it. You think that trans people are in the way and that trans people should get out of the way. Please shut the fuck up factors such as being the issue of capitalism, being the issue of patriarchy, being the issue of racism. Oh Things yeah, guys. Oh yeah, the left never talks about capitalism. It's not literally a meme that every single leftist video essay is about how Disney is is capitalist. It's it's literally that's like that's like the right wing meme. They're like, hey everybody, I just came out with my new video essay about how SpongeBob is capitalist. That's literally a right wing meme. What are you fucking talking about? It's like, all we fucking talk about is capitalism. On this stream, all we fucking talk about is capitalism. What the fuck? Just, you cannot be more wrong and dishonest Which than this. Which are well good in theoretical terms, but when it comes to individuals navigating their lives day to day nonchalantly, these theoretical terms and notions of systemic issues or micro issues are pretty inane. Contrary to the online left, the rhetoric of reactionaries or essentialist ideas about the world are very accessible, they are also pretty welcoming, and they address something that I think we can see most definitely with modern masculinity. That of great neglect of men and modern men and socializing and the socialization of modern men. Mutual respect for the concerns and issues surrounding and involving men. Tolerance and understanding for masculinity and men growing up in this world, as well as anxiety. Examples such as Andrew Tate are interesting instances of how reactionary politics can offer practical responses to the cost of of living, to masculinity, to a society which fixates on appearances, on the physical, on sex, to globalization, to multiculturalism, especially for those who are increasingly being just a cascade, just, just, it's like somebody is dumping fucking, like, fruit salad, you're drowning in it, just every buzzword, or oh, oh, none of it makes any sense, we're fucking drowning left behind and ignored, not just by society in general, but
Oh, uh, uh, somebody in chat, Icolo says, I wonder if she'll respond to this response. There's a chance. She does seem like the type who would respond to a response. Um, but if she does, she's just going to say that I'm mad and loud and uppity all the entire time. And then she's going to try and say that, I, that I'm racist because I said, uh, she's going to try and say that I'm racist because I said that um, it seems like she's trying to be the new Candace Owens when she said that Candace Owens, remember that she said that Candace Owens was a replaceable cog. And then I said, well, are you trying to replace her? She's going to say I'm racist for that. 100%. I'd be willing to put money on it specifically by the left. Reactionary politics is very good at framing itself as being there in order to help people, watch, as well as watch. attracting those oh, who- Oh, and it's funny. She'll cut this part out. She'll watch this part if she does a response, which she might, I don't know, she might not. But if she does a response, she'll watch this part and she'll cut this part out. So it looks like, uh, you know, to her dumbass audience, they'll just be like, wow, wow, how could that, so much for the tolerant left, am I right? with their message without actually being hateful, bad people, racist people, whatever phobia people themselves who otherwise feel neglected, ignored and as if their life is not going anywhere. Prince Petty says the fact that you think that she would call you racist says more about you than her. What's it say about me? Can you, can you tell me what, what can, you, can you explain that to me, Prince Petty? What's that supposed to say? What does that say about me? I want to understand your line of love judgment there. I feel like you might have said that without actually thinking what it meant, but I want to know what, what you think it says about me. We are living in a loneliness epidemic and the unaliving rates for men are exponentially higher than that of women. Generically, the online left doesn't speak about this nor acknowledges that this is even happening. So when reactionaries have the language of taking back control, sovereignty, autonomy, making America and therefore by extension yourself great again, it is again no wonder that individuals are drawn to this rhetoric and these narratives. Although I just j less than 10 minutes ago, you just said that you believe the left is going to continue, continue to grow and gain power. And now you are saying that they are fleeing, that people are fleeing to the right and that the right is having an advantage. So just which one is it? Can you just sort it out in your mind or do I need to add another fucking clock? Andrew Tate is a misogynist troll. He does also say things which resonate with an audience. Both can be true at the same time. He you know who else said things that resonate with an audience? Fucking Adolf Hitler, who gives a fucking shit. Yeah, a Andrew Tate says, yeah, you should, you should put your wife in her place. You should be the man on top of the world. You should have a Bugatti. And if you don't, you're just being a cuck and it's your wife's fault. Andrew Tate says that you should be a pimp. Andrew Tate says that you should enslave women into sex slavery. Are you fucking crazy? Talks very interestingly, and I think quite profoundly, if I can use that word, about the seeming moral decline in Western civilizations, about the lack of moral homogeneity and its consequences on society, its consequences on safety, on feeling at home, reactionaries oh. and extremists. Ah uh, yes, the centrist theocrat, my favorite thing, to give to give Tate a talking point about how we really need to have a centralized belief system that everyone believes in. Inc incredible! Extremist scapegoat groups, of course. You're right, this, Nuts, you're but right. But as I said, it's important to I can't to believe still I'm saying it, but you're correct, Nuts. Through a lens of understanding. Nuts says, guys, 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 she's not a turf, she's a fem cell. Let's get it right. I'm sorry. I don't want I don't want to disrespect her identity as well as empathy, especially when that empathy and understanding is needed for individuals who the left is meant to be representing. He's just like really annoying about how normal he is. Like nothing he says is surprising to me. You're just super into where things are currently and you think politics is cringe. Left and right, they're both cringe. I don't even watch the news. You have political takes, but because you don't pay attention to politics, they're completely uninformed. Like most average people, you're just like way more online. So you're into fucking constantly talking about how much you hate women. I am a proud feminist and I like your videos. People like that excluding me from my own movement by including a bunch of issues that have nothing What's to happening? do with women. Hey, 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 do you know what she's talking about? What issues? do you think she's talking about man a bunch of issues that have nothing to do with women brother that is a transphobe that is a 
transphobic, exclusionary, radical feminist. That's why she's a feminist and also a transphobe. Instead of reading comments from pieces of- I don't understand what is going on here. ...of shit that don't think trans women are women, maybe read some comments from my chat that say, I used to watch Sensitive Society. And I really fucking hate him now, because I grew up, and it took me a while to realize how bigoted he is. I'll just read the back and forth between Tara Mugni and another subscriber before commenting on it specifically. They, Abba and Preach, love going after trans people, so it's a no from me. The idea that Tara thinks Abba and Preach are transphobic is giving me cognitive dissonance, because I like some of her content, but that take is way off. But it is what it is. Are you kidding? Not at all. All Tara. It's fine though. I can concede that a difference in opinion is bound to happen. I couldn't get the screen. Screenshot, but Tara began to list some titles from Abba and Preach content. Another dog whistling title Trans woman enters female bathroom and this happened. They know what they're doing. Trying to bait a transphobic reactionary audience is transphobia. Trans woman enters female bathroom and this happened. Trans woman Leah Thomas breaks record. Cis women need to work harder. Yeah, it's pretty obvious what's going on with these with these titles. Yeah, it's, it's pretty clear. I think Tara Mookney is correct. If this was about any other group except for trans people, people would call it out for what it is. It's fucking prejudiced. It's fucking obviously baiting a negative reaction. Stop pretending it isn't, good lord. If someone were to title a video, woman protesters lost it and proceeds to show woman losing it, that is acting out, yelling, etc. I wouldn't say they are automatically woman haters. It's ignorant to assume anything that shows trans people in a bad light is automatically transphobic. If you're a channel that makes content that's, I think I know what, I think I know what's being talking about now. Okay, here we go. Live chat on a now private live by Khadija Mabowie in response to a ABBA and Preach's video on them. Linked below. Okay, so we've reached the point of the level, the point of just absolute dementia, where, uh, where Kidology is just trying to, is, is taking pictures of a live chat where one content creator was arguing with somebody else about how these people are clearly baiting towards a specific direction. And they're, de de they're, they're, de they're baiting in a specific direction and their content is also baiting in a specific direction. This is just demented. Just, oh my fucking God. And Tara didn't respond. I find this interaction fascinating and also an example of the problem which i see with the left when it comes to such issues if you watch abba and preacher's content they most definitely are not transphobic they are very pro trans rights trans individuals but they are also very understanding and very sympathetic toward the concerns which are raised by women biological women and by feminists you know what pisses me off <sighs> is that <laughs> That's not the majority of trans people. Absolutely. That's not the majority of trans Absolutely. people. Absolutely. There's, and, and that's the fucked up thing is that there's a couple of people like that that derailed the whole discussion, the real discussion that we're supposed to have, and derail what's really going on and makes everybody in that category look bad. True. That really? That's really weird. To you, right? Like, that's what you're trying, like, your video is doing that. You're saying that's not all trans people, and yet you're the one fixating on the one, on the trans person who, in your mind, is doing something wrong. Weird. It's almost like you're sort of trying to performatively wash your hands of guilt while doing the thing that you're talking about right here. You are creating the problem. If you actually believed that this type of person wasn't representative of all trans people, why are you covering it? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, she's showing this because she thinks they're being pro-trans, yes. That's not, that's not all trans people. That's, that's not them. Mm -mm. Not all men, not all trans. <laughs> also, <laughs> you know, I think a lot yeah. of folks are online all the time, and so they expect everybody to be, like, up to date on all this lingo and everything yep. else happening, and it's just not the case. Yep. I go to most around. of my friends, but I go to people in my family, like, none of these people know about any of this mm -hmm. stuff. So if I were to ask them, what does this person look like to y'all, they would have probably said something similar. So you have to understand where people are at with this conversation and, and, and coming at it from- And now they're spending their time 
uh, defending why somebody should not be, uh, why somebody is okay for misgendering someone and why they shouldn't be, you know, corrected apparently. Uh, any other perspective is a losing battle because you're convinced the world is supposed to be one way based off your online interactions or whatever the fuck it might be. Reality is just completely different. Like I said, this Prince Petty says, it seems reductive to say a black woman's reaction to your attack on them would be to call you racist, especially someone like Kidology. It's dim dismissive and prejudiced. No, uh, it's prejudiced towards conservatives. Every single conservative that I've ever engaged with uh, to any meaningful length always does this little, they do jokes like that. They go, well, you're being transphobic to me. You're being racist to me. You're being blah, 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 blah. They do it all the time. You're, you're, I, I know that it, it took you a long time to try and put that back together because I know you hadn't actually thought about the second half of it. But no, that's not prejudiced. If anything, the only thing it's prejudiced to is fucking conservatives. Or maybe, I guess by extension, centrists who are all conservatives. But yeah, okay. This person is actually far more progressive than a lot of other people I know. Because this person said, what would you like to be called? And instead of just telling them what you want and then they can do it. You try to do a whole switch You try to. Yes, exactly. As Galaxy Osakat says, then and now they're defending why it's okay to misgender and disrespect somebody's identity. Yep, wild. Super good example of them being trans supportive, right? They love trans people. Get to the root of like what they think and everything else. Like, yo, just keep it pushing, Listen, bro. You're being... I'm not out here talking to store clerks trying to solve their internal race. Like, it is what it is. Just be respectful of me when I'm in your store and I'll be respectful of you. And I don't need to know all your fucking personal views. I don't even need you to agree with me. Let's just get this shit right. I'm not here to go send you to sensitivity training. That's not what here. Do your transactions and bitch be gone. Overall, they add a particular kind of nuance to the conversation. Whether you agree with it or not, it I wonder if I wonder if they would have the same reaction to a shop owner being racist. Like if a shop owner being transphobic or treating somebody badly, like are you just supposed to ignore it? Would they have the same response to a shop owner being racist? I wonder. Just curious is irrelevant to the fact that they are in no way anti-trans individuals or anti-trans rights. And I think for Tara to instinctively label them transphobic and to then insinuate that this individual is somehow peddling to transphobes or to a transphobic perspective by actually agreeing with Abba and Preach or by having a different opinion is really not where we want to be, I think, in politics, or at least not where the left wants to be in so far as persuading. Okay, I gotta say something here, okay? Wherever you want the left to be is certainly not where the left wants to be. Your petty concern trolling here has given us nothing useful. You've done nothing but do propaganda for the right in this entire video. It's embarrassingly bad. It's completely incoherent. And, uh, where the left wants to be is none of your concern. You aren't a leftist. You don't agree with leftists. You don't give a shit. So why should we ever give a shit about what you have to say about where the left should be? The fucking all of us are out here fucking fighting for our, our rights, fighting, literally actively pushing back against a rising fucking libel against trans people in the United States. The right is obsessed with us. Tucker Carlson runs fucking episodes attacking trans people every motherfucking day from one of the biggest platforms in the country. And you say that we're fixating on a, on a, on a micro issue by defending ourselves. Fuck off. Just fuck off individuals in so far as doing the labor necessary in order to really get people on board with how it perceives and sees the world. The idea of being on the right side of history and instead of engaging in political discourse, discourse that may be uncomfortable, that may not be at least within your sphere of interest or concern or within the kind of lived experience that you have, but is vital to good politics, is missing here. Rather than engaging with the other side or with a different perspective, it is easier to just ignore it. And I think this feeds into my third point. Abstract identities. This is one that I personally resonate with when it comes to leftist politics. The left has always had the potential to care and the potential to care for more people than just one's immediate friends and family and community, but to actually care for individuals who go the world and beyond. I believe that we can make
What? Okay, another we gotta we gotta make the clocks we gotta make the clocks larger. Gotta make the clocks larger. An unintelligible sentence. The left has always been able to appeal to people of the world who are even beyond into the world over. They're the world over, everybody. It's time. Hold on, I gotta move these clocks down in correct order. We have to we have to move them below the fucking overlay or else it won't work well. There we go. There we go. Much better. Let's continue. Contact with other beings and other civilizations if we expand our consciousness. So the online left doesn't care about people. It cares about abstract people. Based on my politicized identity. In the last section, you said that the left only cared about their friends, but they wouldn't tell the truth about it like the right. So which one is it? Is the left too busy giving a shit about their personal friends so that they can't pay attention to politics? Or is it that the left doesn't care about real people? These are, these are incompatible ideas. You literally have to choose one because they are otherwise contradictory. Saying that the left only cares about abstract people while simultaneously arguing that they, that they care about uh, that they that they only care about their friends. These are not compatible. These are simply not fucking compatible. Based on my personal identity, I would be the poster child. I should be the poster child for the left, for the modern left. I am a queer woman. I am black. I am a minority. I am. I'm not even considered working class because I'm an immigrant. Abstracts are convenient. Yeah, uh, as it turns out, contrary to your bullshit claims, the left doesn't just care about identity. You also spout completely wrong p opinions and also defend transphobes and do a little bit of borderline transphobia yourself. Yeah, so, wow, almost like your arguments are totally made up and not based on anything real. ...to care about because abstracts importantly, don't have to be engaged with. You can look at them from afar in your ivory tower. They're also simple to understand and therefore you can group people and label them easily. And I think this is something that the left is very susceptible to. It cares about abstracts because abstracts are convenient and understandable. The abstract black person is having to navigate their way through a jungle of microaggression. Thank you very much for the $10 submersed sword. All of you who support the channel are deeply deeply appreciated truly thank you so much you make it possible for me to keep my show going and also for my show to perpetually be free thank you for supporting the show also if you're here and you are still surviving the dementia attack please press the like button and also make sure that you're subscribed to demon mama and racism in the modern world. The abstract white person is privileged, is unaware of the internal biases that they hold. However, Batsy in chat says, I'm very glad you're going over this one. When I first watched this, this video just sounded insane to me. That's because it's actually completely disjointed. This video has no consistent argument. Most of its claims are just factually verifiably wrong on a very low level, and the rest is just transphobia. It is, and also, yes, as everyone is pointing out right now, and also for this entire video, she has abstracted to le the left to a childish interpretation. She believes neoliberals, liberals, Stalinists, anarchists, etc. are all a part of the left. Talk about an abstraction. This is just, she doesn't know what she's talking about. This is just madness. It's literal madness. Uh, when we go to the personal level, things are very different. And when you are continually confronted with people either ignoring you because you don't subscribe to the abstract identity which they have bestowed on you, or when you are just... What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You j ignored or you are told that there's something oh. wrong with you, not with them or their perspective on such an issue or their inability. Is she right now, is she complaining about not being a, a leftist 
because she openly states that she's not a leftist and doesn't want to be a leftist, but now she's saying that the left is bad for not considering her a leftist, even though she is explicitly opens this video and in the description of her video explicitly states that she will not be and is not a leftist. Is that, is that what she's trying to say here? Is that what is trying to be communicated here? Benifer the potato says, what's up with the spinning circles? Chat, explain it to Benifer. Let's go. ...to humanize you. It is no wonder that individuals are moving to the right in order to find some kind of identity and acceptance. ...being white, but also marginalized being a woman. So this... <laughs> oh... Guys, I have no understanding of politics, okay? All my life, I just called myself a Democrat because that was, like, the cool thing for my fucking friends to say. And then one day I went to college where there were gender-neutral bathrooms and I was too dumb to read the signs, so I got really scared. Then there was a trigger warning, which for some reason bothered me. I don't exactly know why. If only there was a trigger warning that there was a trigger warning. And then they asked me to write about intersectionality, a very real thing that exists, but again, I'm too dumb to understand. What the fuck? Yes! You realize there's such a thing as having white privilege while that also uh, intersects with marginalization for being a woman? You realize this is like a regular thing, right? Yeah, it's obviously. easy. I will explain it to you, okay? I'll explain it to you like you're, you're a kindergarten since that seems to be the brain capacity that you're running on. <clears throat> there exists a little thing called subconscious bias. We all have subconscious biases. Subconscious biases tend to privilege those who are white. Because white people tend to be the majority, more people are familiar with white people, and hence tend to see white people as normal, essentially. There's already plenty of evidence showing that subconscious bias plays a role in helping or causing those, some people, to literally perceive black people as being more criminal, or more dangerous, or scary, or whatnot. So those are subconscious biases that although are subconscious, they are not an intentional malicious attempt at being racist, they do absolutely exist, and that results in downsides for people of color, hence leading to also privilege for people who are white. It's that simple. Mutual humanization starts with talking to one another. Because in talking to... I do not understand what the point of that clip was. I just... Hunter was... Hunter was just correct there. Like, he was just explaining the basic concept of privilege. Now, as I've said many times in many of my videos, because as you all know, I have heavy critiques of the privilege framework. Uh, that's a pretty fair analysis of what the concept of privilege is. And I understand why some people find it a valid concept, even though, uh, even though I have critiques of the, of, the, of, of the way that people use privilege as a concept. Anyway, let's continue. Each other, that's when we humanize individuals, when we see them beyond merely the color of their skin, their gender, beyond their political identities. When we see them as nuanced individuals with different and varying opinions on a multitude of issues Oh and yeah, concerns. wait a minute, isn't this show right here, isn't this literally the Prager U show? This is, the, by, yeah, this is the, people have confirmed, this is indeed the Prager U talk show. Prager U, oh, they're so, Prager U, they're such reasonable centrists, you know? Prager U, the, uh, you know, the people who, <laughs> the guy, guy who fucking wrote about how you have a right to rape your wife as a, as a husband. So we Christian have to right. actually take the time where we have to be patient in understanding them and trying to get from A to B together. And this is where I get onto, I would say, the more debate sphere of the left online, at least what I see of the debate sphere. Because when it comes to politicized identities being prioritized over actual, real, authentic, individual identities, we get to a point where, for instance, the left becomes obsessed with the past, particularly with making individuals in the present pay for the past. Without okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The One of the opening segments of this, she talks specifically about how the right has an advantage by being fixated on the past. I just, I don't... How it... How can you have so many totally unconnected ideas? Ideas that discuss the exact same thing, but just never make the connection. 
Without appreciating the nuance, the multifaceted nature of identities in the here and now. So I think the online left needs to really reevaluate sort of how it labels individuals, how it perpetually identifies, and I would say more than often misidentifies people based purely on a politicized identity, which is often just bestowed on people based on their physical appearance and attributes. Editing me once again. I recently watched what I think. Didn't she just play a clip talking about uh, f about like the left having a, a like like telling people to not assume people's pronouns? Didn't she just play a clip about how the the left shouldn't do that because people are going to make assumptions? That wasn't that the Abe and whatever that that showed that she was showing a whole bunch. Wasn't that literally what she talked about? And now she's saying that the left doesn't do it enough. Apparently, the left makes too many assumptions about people's identities now, even while simultaneously telling people not to do it. I'm adding another clock, by the way. I'm adding another clock, just so you know. We're going to make a little tiny. This one's going to be a little special tiny clock. It's a tiny little clock that will go up here. We'll put it right up here. It'll be great. I'm ready. I'm ready for another clock, everybody. There we go. Let's continue. It's going to probably blow up and everybody's going to cover this debate between feminists and anti-feminists or individuals who are not feminists on Vice. It featured an incredibly diverse panel of individuals. I found this panel or this debate indicative of where the left is falling dramatically short. It's this getting is, personal. I don't want it to be personal. A lot of us live in this space where we're told that our sure. opinions don't count because they're not the right kind of opinions. And we're constantly shouted over and talked over regardless of what we look like because there's one group in society that basically takes precedence and it's frustrating. What do you what do what do people mean? What the fuck do people mean when they say our opinions are not the right opinions? Isn't that true of any fucking disagreement in, in the entire universe? Isn't that true of every disagreement that somebody doesn't think you have the right opinion and that's why you're arguing? This is literally a cis woman shouting over a trans woman as well. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, of course, it's 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 frustrating because maybe, when we try to talk about it, we get shouted down, we get told to be quiet, we we get we get spoken down too as well. So okay, yeah, there's hostility. It's spoken down too. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm melting. It's melting. There's water. There's water pouring out of the walls. I could see, I could see the outside through my walls because they're melting right now. There for plenty of women. Let's try to make this an opportunity to speak. <laughs> you're with literally each a white woman then. from Australia. You live in a bubble and you're pissed that voices that have been silenced forever finally can be heard. As I've said, this is not good politics. This is very, very weak politics and it alienates many people, many voices, and the importance of the very thing which allegedly we're all meant to be standing for, namely inclusivity. What I found interesting about this panel. Inclusivity. I mean, do we have to do tolerance paradox? No, we don't. Let's fucking tolerance paradox. Obviously, you can't be inclusive to people who believe that you should die for being inclusive. That is the toler that's the paradox of tolerance. You cannot a tolerant system cannot tolerate somebody who wishes to destroy tolerance. Obviously. It's like literally such a basic thing. It's it's not <sighs> was how one of the panelists, who most definitely was a leftist and identified herself as such, Yelda Ali, responded and reacted to Sydney Watson. Now, you can think what you want about Sydney Watson or about Pearl. You know, that's not what's important here. What is important... Wait a minute. Why does that name sound so familiar? Why does that name sound so fucking familiar? Australian conservative YouTuber. Uh oh. Uh oh. Apparently she has a subscribe star. That's very odd for a conservative to have a subscribe star.
I feel like we watched something with this person. He is anti-social justice, anti-feminism, anti-multiculturalism, pro-gun. She was against the Me Too movement because she thinks it ruins workplaces. She organized the March for Men movement. She, criticized fe she criticizes feminists that demonize men. She is also against the anti-white racism and promoted the South African white genocide conspiracy theory. She is critical of transgender ideology. And she is also critical of the Australian laws currently allowing uh, uh, currently addressing gender expression identity. When she traveled to the United States, she was detained at the border by the FBI alongside Avi Yemeni, who was deported. Her views also resulted in her having a conflict with her landlord and getting evicted. She co-hosted the show You Are Here with Nazi Elijah Schaefer on Blaze TV. She has been on a guest show on John Doyle, Alex Jones, Gothics, Kyle Rittenhouse's show, and Actual Justice Warrior. Oh, the right doesn't like her. Sydney has been criticized by the right for her attitude on the shows t on the show towards her younger guests, specifically John Doyle and Lick Nicholas Fuentes and Kai Clips. Due to this, many viewers on the show requested that Sydney be replaced and some boycotted the show altogether. In 2022, Ethan Ralph was set to be a guest on her show, but pulled out due to a rape allegation against him, as well as fearing that Nick Rikita, a YouTuber who he'd had an online feud with, was planning to physically ambush him. He then stated that he changed his mind and wanted to appear appear on the show, but Elijah refused. Refused. Ethan just showed up at the Blaze studio in person and then attempted to ambush Eliza Schaefer. He recorded Elijah on a cozy TV stream, but then ignored him. Ralph ridiculed his walk and called him a homosexual on Telegram. Apparently, she was present for this. This was before she left the show. Oh, boy. Oh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of random shit here. She's definitely close with Elijah Schaefer. All right, there you go. There you have it. Let's continue. And I think is how this individual Yelda responded to merely listening to two women expressing their personal experiences and their feelings about being woman, being woman. Is that really what they were doing? Is that really all they were doing? They were just expl just sharing their experiences? You think that the far right, anti-trans, anti-me too, anti-multiculturalism person was just sharing her experiences? white woman in modern society. Based on an interview which Yelda did with Vice a few years ago, she is an entrepreneur. She founded an organization called Camel Assemblies. And I found it intriguing how she describes Camel Assemblies. What we have suddenly, that is in Camel Assemblies worldwide, is a whole bunch of powerful women that are in a room together, but there's no take, take, take culture. There's actual listening and thinking honestly, okay, who is this person? What is her purpose? So it seems it's quite ironic that this individual stands for listening, for women being authentic. Seska with the $20, thank you very, very much for supporting the so show. Thank you very, very much. I deeply appreciate that. We are almost finished with this, and then I can finally rest sharing their fears, their hopes, their dreams, where they are in their lives. Yet, when two women try to, irrespective of whether you like them or not, Pearl, for instance, was sharing how she competes. What a reach. Can I just say that this is the biggest reach I've ever heard in my entire life? Oh, your company has a has a a specific process for ensuring that people are listened to? Hmm, a bit hypocritical because you didn't listen to this Nazi bitch tell you that you're bad at a semi-professional level in basketball, I believe, and how she doesn't believe that trans women should compete in women's basketball professionally. I don't confidence understand can't make why you guys are seven. so hostile. She's sharing her and experience can't make in me a specific seven. No, she's sharing field. And I'd have to go, No, she's yeah. not. She's, she's, she's a woman who's had it, an no, experience. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, you guys are so Pearl obsessed finish. with your own yeah. experiences yeah. and your own existence, and yet when a woman is sitting here telling you, I feel as though this is unfair and this is compromising, you know, 
she's got the Marjorie Taylor green eyes. It's weird. It's weird. Thing. And the situation is not helping women. You guys are like, meh, meh, meh. but when you're like, I'm a black person that did this, 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 and this, then it's va valid and, and fair and viable. Sydney was sharing her experience of the hashtag Me Too movement and about being a white woman. You could see Yelda's response. And in terms of this being something, uh, HGB guy says, was she the, 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 the completely mad woman on the conservative panel? No, that was Witsky. That was Witsky. Lauren Witsky. Lauren Witsky is like, uh, like a scary person as in like not like physically scary as in like seeing someone that's in that mental state is scary that humans can even become that way it's like seeing someone with a prion disease lauren witzke is just like a it's like it's like a dark souls monster was brought into the real world a truly hollowed entity that has nothing like nothing but hatred and malice swirling around inside a literal neo-nazi that represents the left it is sad to see and it is disheartening to see that in the face of being unable to debate being able to engage with the other side they are merely laughed down and reduced to their physical attributes as opposed puerto rican musician says uh pearly things the person in that video lied about being a collegiate athlete Lem of course she fucking did of course she was never actually there and her story that she said was just fucking made up to their individuality and individual experiences. Increasingly, this seems to be something that the right and all its diversity, as I've explained, is far more proficient in doing. And this is definitely an area where the left needs to up its game. And we can see this just from the comment section of this Vice video. I'll link it down below for you to go and see if you'd like to. Even to Take my word for it, a YouTube comment section was bad. Bruh. Thank you very much, Submersed Sword, for the incredibly generous $10. Thank you very, very much. I've had one of those woke liberal Catholics tell me that domestic terrorist threat of students made in Job Corps was just a joke. That's, that's fucked up. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Just read the comment section because it's very interesting how even with Vice, which very much, at least you can see by the editing, was, I think, on the side of the majority panelists who were feminists, who were... What are you trying to say here? What are you trying to say? Very intersectional, really came out looking bad. I don't really know how to conclude this video. Got to make one of the clocks a little bigger for that one. That didn't, that sentence didn't finish. But I think what I said really comes down to the need for the left to realize its potential and to work in order to see that potential manifest itself. Because I think- So let me get this straight. Let's try to summarize here. The left needs to stop caring about trans people. The left needs to consider conservatives leftists because remember the part where she said that um, it's just, it's all messed up because uh, it's all messed up because uh, uh, because a gay a gay conservative can't be considered a leftist, which is kind of weird. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, the left needs to embrace conspiracy theory. The left needs to basically do uh, do nostalgia for the 1950s. The left uh, needs to work harder, apparently, which is a little weird. The left should be more racist, is what she said. Uh, because they should because she said it was good that the right is honest about their racism So the left should be more honest about racism. So the left should apparently be more racist uh, The left needs to embrace whiteness as a concept and therefore white supremacy, which is baked in as a part of whiteness uh, We could talk about that another time. I've done it a million times um, uh, The left needs to be more diverse apparently um, The left needs to be more populist Okay the left needs to listen to shoe on head. The left needs to uh, pay attention to the white working class. Uh, the left should learn something from Andrew Tate. The left should stop talking about abstract people even though this entire video was abstracting the left. And finally, the left should act differently when they go on a vice debate that the one thing that the right most definitely does not have on its side is the fact that people are increasingly unhappy, 
that people are increasingly lost within the political landscape and that being told, which is a systematic tenet of the right, that you just have to work harder in order to get by in life does not align itself to the increasingly poorer, increasingly marginalized and those lacking in political power who are on the right. The left, if it wants to attract humanity to it, if it wants to revitalize a modern politics that is incredibly stale, incredibly disenchanting and is literally ruining the lives of the vast majority of people across the world needs to up its game big time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear your opinions down in the comment section. Please be respectful but also please critique me on anything and everything that I've said. I'd love to start a conversation and a discussion about all of this because this has just been something that's been on my mind this year, uh, especially just being more so on YouTube, engaging with more people, with more voices. And I think the only way that we can move forward and we can evolve and do better or do different is through discourse. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you greatly and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Congratulations, chat. You now have experienced, you thought that we were watching a Killology video, but unbeknownst to you, I actually put on a two hour long dementia simulation video. You now know what it's like. You understand what it's like to have your brain functions shut down in real time. You've witnessed it yourself. I know it felt like you were watching a Kidology video, but you weren't. <sighs> yeah, now you know how to draw a clock properly. You got to bunch all the numbers up over on one side, okay?